This may not be the center of the college football universe, but don't tell that to the 100,000 plus that are here to watch number two Texas take on number four Ohio State. This has the feeling of a national championship game, but it's not a BCS game. It's the BCS Spotlight game presented by EDT from here at Ohio. Stadium, number two against number four, John Saunders, Craig James, and Aaron Taylor. The last time we saw Texas quarterback Vince Young on a national stage, he was carving apart another Big Ten team, Michigan, in the Rose Bowl. This year, he hopes to get back to the Rose Bowl, and if he does, he'll be playing for a national championship. There's no question, guys, that tonight is a special night, and because of that, sometimes young players try and do too much. Well, Vince Young and the University of Texas Longhorns are guys that can't do that. Instead, you need to be relax you need to trust what you see and give what the Ohio State defense gives you if they do that they'll be fine Vince Young and the Longhorns don't need to go out there and be great if they go out there and be who they are their greatness will shine through and the same thing holds true for the Ohio State quarterback whoever that is Wick or Smith out on the field but Young has a guy that I think could be a difference maker in this football game Dave Thomas the tight end for the University of Texas will be an outlet once A.J. Hawk finds Vince and Young on the corners and he's scrambling right out there Young better get rid of the football he better find Mr. Thomas in the flat, get the heat off of him, because A.J. Hawk's going to look him up. It's been a bad day in non-conference games for the Big Ten with Michigan and Iowa losing. Does it stay suit here? I like the Sooners. I mean, the uh, Longhorns in this one. <laughs> You can lead a team that scores the most points wins, and I don't think it's going to be Texas. Yeah, okay. We will see you again at halftime. Enjoy the game. Right now, let's join Brent Musburger. All right, John, an electric feeling down here on the floor of the big house. Folks, I've been down here for about an hour, and I've never seen anything quite like this in September. For the first time ever, Ohio State and Texas over in the tunnel. The Buckeyes are coming out. talk about the mood down here on the field both of these teams the youngsters the players are so excited you could see it in their eyes there was not a lot of chatter they were not talking they were listening to the coaches the coaches too are very exciting a couple of the veterans came over and said big night isn't it and then they looked around at this crowd in excess of a hundred thousand here tonight most of them got into their seats early and when Vince Young number 10 came out there was a huge cheer and now the Longhorns of Texas pull onto the field. Let's go to Jack Arute with Coach Jim Trussell. Jack. Well, right now, Brent, what they were doing was checking out the coin that will be used today. Now, Ohio State has two outstanding quarterbacks. And for you, Coach Trestle, it's a tough decision. Will you play both of them? Oh, we absolutely will. Justin will start and, and get a couple series. Troy will get in and get some series, and then we'll go from there. Now, who will get the start? Justin will. Yeah. How long will he play? Well, he'll play at least two series, and then Troy will play two, and we'll keep rotating a little bit and see how it unfolds. This is an electric feeling here in the horseshoe. Right now, it is unbelievable as we continue to count down for kickoff here at the Horseshoe in Columbus, Ohio. As Brent said, it may not be a BCS championship game, but boy, it sure has the feeling. We'll be back with the kickoff next here on ABC. You are looking live at the famed Horseshoe in Columbus, Ohio, where for the first time ever, the Ohio State Buckeyes beat the Texas Longhorns. Quarterback Vince Young is the Texas cover boy. He dazzles you with his arm and his feet. Ted Ginn Jr. is Ohio State's answer. Folks around here haven't seen speed like this since the days of Jesse Owens. And Ginn plays football. We welcome you to the ADT Spotlight Game. 
It is the number two Texas Longhorns against the number four Ohio State Buckeyes here. Good evening, everybody. Partner, I guess I don't need this in my ear. It's not that noisy up here in the booth. We've talked about Vince Young. We've talked about Ginn. What do you do to defend Vince? Well, let's talk about Vince. He's, he's, he's so fast and he's so good. You have to have the right type of team to stop him. Ohio State has that type of team. You have to have linebackers that can run, and you have to have good size because he's so big, and Ohio State has those type of guys. And then you have to be a little bit patient because there's no magic bullet. He's going to make some plays. You just have to keep playing. Now, what about Ginn? It's a little bit more of an advantage for Texas because they don't snap it to Ted Ginn every time. Texas must find out where he lines up every time and then go after the guy who gets the ball first, the Ohio State quarterback. All right, Gary, and right now, let's go down below to Jack, who is with Matt Brown. And the Longhorns coach have made their living lately playing wide open, no holds barred. Will that continue tonight? Jack, we're going to play that way tonight. What a great setting for college football and great respect with these two institutions. How impressed were your players when they marched into the horseshoe tonight? They're impressed, but they've been in nice places before. This just makes it more fun for us. Good luck, Coach. Thanks, Jack. Texas won the toss and deferred. So the Buckeyes of Ohio State, with Zwick taking the first snap, will go on offense. Jim Trussell's record in big games is phenomenal. And folks, this is a big game. Do you see again number seven over on the right? Santonio San Holmes is also back. They're deep. David Pino is the kicker for the Longhorns. Number 15. That was a change that Mac told us about during the pregame warmups. He will kick the extra points and the field goals, which means, of course, that last week's kicker, he will just do the punting. So Richmond McGee is the punter. Pino with the ball on the tee, and we're about to be underway. it away from Ginn. That was part of Mac Brown's strategy. However, Ginn runs up and fields it, and the Buckeyes will start with excellent field position. So the Buckeyes anticipating that shorter kickoff, and they are ready for it. We will see Justin as a starter, but Troy Smith will be in there. So let me take you to their new defensive coordinator in Austin, Texas. And Gary, it is Gene Chiswick did an outstanding job with Auburn. Now, what's his task here? Brent, he will attack the quarterback. And when you blitz, you must be up on your assignments because big plays can happen. And then also, once those speed guys, Holmes and Ginn, get the football, Texas must tackle tonight. Justin Zwick, the junior from Massillon's Washington High School, 6'4", 225. The winner in the bowl game and in last week's opener. They open in the gun. And they will throw a screen incomplete. It was it a lateral? No, it was an incomplete pass. This crew is a Big 12 officiating crew. And our offensive coordinator, Jim Bowman, he will have Santonio Holmes out there with Ginn. Stan White when they need a fullback. Antonio Pittman will start at tailback. Ryan Hamby, the talented tight end. Daddish, Sims, and Nick Mangold with Downing and Barton. Mangold is the leader of this improved offensive line. He makes the line calls. You could see his eyes as he surveyed the set, and now he's pointing out what they have to do. And Zwick comes up under center for second down. Here's Pittman's first carry. Picks up about six yards on it against this defense for the Texas Longhorns. Crowder Oakham. Rod Wright is the All-American, and Brian Robinson. So four Texans, and then the linebackers. The leader, Aaron Harris, number two. Three more Texans. And this defensive backfield, Ross, Griffin, Huff, and Cedric Griffin. No relation, although Griffin does have a twin brother on the sideline. Here is Huff. He can play both corner and safety. And there's Ginn right there. Third and five, got the first, dropped the ball, incomplete, waved it off. It looked for a moment like they were going to pick it up with Anthony Gonzalez, 
the third wideout, but he didn't hang on long enough, and Ohio State punts. Well, that was very, very catchable ball. Good throw by Justin Zwick. Very quick in his hands and out of his hands. You saw Ginn run a little bit of a decoy, and Justin Zwick put it right there, a drop ball. A.J. Trapasso. Aaron Ross back deep, feels it at the 12-yard line, and he is down at the 10. Dante Whitner, and now we're going to take a look at Vince Young, the all-everything quarterback. And, of course, Jim Haycock has his hands full here tonight, Gary, as the defensive coordinator. Two P words are the words tonight for Ohio State. They must be patient. Vince going to get some. And they must be physical. They want to win the physical battle in this game for if you're Ohio State. A.J. Hawk, the All-American linebacker, number 47. The Buckeyes split. One of the backers out to pick up the slot receiver. Completed on first down to Quan Cosby. And A.J. Hawk is there defensively. We'll mention these linebackers all night long. And for Greg Davis, he'll have Swede. Will be one of his wideouts. Brian Carter, the leading receiver a week ago. David Thomas, a fine tight end. This, folks, is probably the best offensive line in college football. Scott and Blaylock. What tremendous tackles they are. And Will Allen, the guard, number 72, gets down. Young is back in the shotgun. Second down and eight. Selvin Young, the ball carrier, and Kudla, Mike Kudla, makes the stop. Now Greg Davis coordinates Selvin Young and the, uh, and the rest of this offense, which we've mentioned. And Nate Sally is a big play safety for the Bucks and tremendous size as these safeties have to be always aware of Vince Young trying to prevent him from what he did against Michigan in the Rose Bowl. That's their goal. Third down. Here's Young the runner looking for the first down. He's going to get it. There is his first carry and Gary he just took off around the right side and he just outran some players and now a little John going on down there. Not only that but Texas offensive line that time blocked up well. Ohio State was expecting a pass on the play. This was a called lead draw. You see the block on the linebacker all out of space right there for Vince Young and into the secondary. That Texas offensive line knocked down four different Ohio State players. On third and seven Vince Young rushes for 10 yards. So number 10 picks up the first first down of the evening and from behind him in the shotgun. Folks, there's not a seat to be had. Look at those folks standing up back there in the aisles and everything. Vince is back. He throws a screen to Ramon's tail on the outside. And it was number 42, Bobby Carpenter, for this Buckeye defense. And now let's talk about this defensive line. Quinn Pitcock is the ringleader there with Kudla, Marcus Green, and David Patterson. And then the best trio of linebackers anywhere in college football. Bobby Carpenter, Anthony Schlegel, A.J. Hawk, the underrated defensive backfield. Yabote, Sally, and Whitner and Everett, they don't receive enough credit simply because the linebackers are the fellas that everyone always talks about. Kept it. Got another first down, breaks free at midfield, and he has the angle, so Whitner would not give him any more than that. But here he is, Vince Young, 32 yards. He has now run for 42 yards, and he's barking away, saying all day long, folks, all day long. You could see the false pull this way, and then Vince Young goes the opposite way. Misdirection play for the quarterback. One-on-one -on -one to the outside. You see David Patterson takes the bait. And what did Jim Tressel tell us, Brent? Vince Young likes to run to the right. That's both plays to the right. They had the scouting report on him, but they still can't stop him. And off inside to Selvin Young. Now, this is linebacker A.J. Hawk talking about stopping Vince Young. He's a very, very elusive runner. 
he makes a lot of people miss, and he, and he breaks tackles. He's a big guy, and the, the problem with stopping him is he can also throw the ball. So it, it makes it tough as a defender to stop a guy like that. You just have to, I think, have a guy accountable for him and, and make sure you, you realize where he is on the field. It's one thing, Brent, having a guy account for him. There's another thing being close enough to make the play. Space is so important when you got a fast guy like that. Texas first possession of the game following the lead blocker for another first down Vince Young starting to pile up the numbers already the first player in Texas history to have a thousand yards passing and rushing in a season he of course was the Rose Bowl MVP rushed for four threw for a fifth touchdown in the first two seasons completed 59 percent of his passes better than any Texas quarterback and he has just rushed for another 10 yards. He's already got a half a hundred folks and we're just underway. This is their first drive of the game. He's going to throw it. Incomplete as his wide man Terrell Brown. We check that that's Billy Pittman I believe. Coming. Fell down that was a perfectly phone ball. Let's look at the game plan for Texas. Stay balanced and you know Texas will do that. They will try to get the ball, running the ball and throwing the ball. For when they're on defense, they must stop yards after catch for Ohio State. And when they're on defense, attack that Ohio State quarterback. Second down and 10. You can see Carpenter move between the end and the tackle for the defensive front. Hawk is trying to get the fumble, but Texas falls on it. Alertly, Texas recovers it. David Thomas, the tight end, saves the moment for the Longhorns. Well, Ohio State was ready for that play. Anthony Schlegel, A.J. Hawk, both linebackers got to the outside of that play. Even if that pitch was properly executed, Ohio State would have stopped that one for no gain. Brandon Mitchell in as the nickelback. Schlegel's the middle linebacker. He's one of two Texans in the starting defensive lineup for Ohio State. going to change the clock here I believe that uh, I heard the tail end of that 12 seconds again the Buckeye defense must be patient you are not going to stop this spread every play you have to just kind of swallow your pride a little bit stay with the game plan and make tackles oh, Randy Crystal and this entire crew out of the Big 12 they worked the Oklahoma game last week the upset by TCU down there. And here it is, third and ten for Young. David Thomas Horns. is a good guy they go to here, the tight end. He's blocking this time. They come back to the right side. And broken up by Yubote. He is the other Texan who starts defensively. Well, uh, Yubote is an interesting story. He's on a Klein, Texas, born in Liberia, moved to the U.S. at the age of four. Great coverage. The Yubote that time was right in Taylor's pocket. This ball was thrown very well, but you see Yubote, there's no chance for that getting a completion. And Taylor, a running back a year ago, did not shield off the defender at all. That had no chance. So here is Pino with Matt Nordgren, the backup quarterback. He'll try a 42-yarder. He was very accurate during pregame practice at the other end. Long enough. So the move by Mac Brown pays off. A 42-yard field goal by David Pino. The Horns strike first. That's crucial in a big game. Ben Chiang is on the headset talking to Greg Davis, his offensive coordinator, who is upstairs in his eighth year. Meanwhile, Mac Brown making notes on his paper down below on the field. Now Richmond McGee comes in to kick it off because Mac obviously was not happy about the short pooch kickoff that went too far and was handled by Ted Ginn. So they go back now to McGee to see what he will do. But here is Ginn, and on the other side, Santonio Holmes is, you can see Ginn communicating, Holmes is the captain of the two on kickoff returns. And the one that doesn't feel it, the other one will jump out and block, especially on punts. So McGee with the ball on the tee. Left hash, got an alley. Holmes to the 40. Penalty 
flag. There may have been a block in the back very late on the return. A penalty flag was thrown around the 45 yard line as Santonio San Holmes brought it out for 51 yards. But let's wait for the penalty. Really is pick your poison back there. Both of them are just as good. Get a little faster. Santonio San reads those holes. Holding during the run back. Number 14. It's a 10 yard penalty. First and 10. See it. They got it into the end zone. Teddy Ginn gets a block to the outside. And look how smartly Santonio San Holmes picks it and then gets to the outside. They're going to spot the ball at the 26 yard line. So Justin Zwick still in the game. He had the first series. We're obviously going to see Troy Smith in this game. Zwick was 0 for 2 on the first series. It's the fourth different spot that San Antonio Holmes has been in so far in this game. Late shift by the Texas defensive front. And did he take too much time? There was a whistle. And I believe that that late shift may have caused Zwick to flinch a little bit. Back there calling signals to see if he should change something. And when he did, he ran out the 25 second clock. There's the play being signaled in from the sidelines. Jim Trussell, of course, he is the play caller. Ballman is upstairs this year, and he will feed down information. But the, there is Jim right there, along with the quarterback coach. Ballman right there. First down and 15. The swing pass to the 26-yard line. They put it in Pittman's hands again. Well, Monday night football at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. It's the Eagles and the Falcons. And that's a rematch of the NFC Championship. Donovan McNabb and Michael Vick. A couple of exciting quarterbacks down there in that one. That's down Atlanta way here. Ohio State trails Texas as the Longhorns with their first possession here march down settled for a field goal after Vince Young accounted for 52 yards in three carries Troy Smith number 10 on the sideline he'll be in at any time Jim was not sure when he would use him but he will use both quarterbacks here tonight from front holes it is complete but short of the first down as you can see Aaron Harris their active middle linebacker making the stop. All right, let's look at Ohio State and what they're going to try to do in this game. Ted Ginn needs to get the ball four times a quarter. That's 16 Ginn touches in this football game. They can't tackle Vince Young, as we've already seen, Brett, one-on-one. -on -one. They have to triangulate all three guys, defensive backs keeping their eye on them, and I think they must win Woody Ball. Short yardage, goal line, tackling, hitting. Tough football. They can't allow Texas to come in here and beat them at tough football. Let's see if Swick can pick up the first down. Here comes Harris on a blitz. They got it. San Antonio Holmes on that slant came across for the first down. Talking about the two headed quarterback situation, we asked Justin about getting along with Troy Smith, and here's what he said. Coach Truss always stressed his team. You know, that comes first, and uh, that's something that we both understand and realize that, you know, we both can bring something to the table and, you know, help the offense out, and that's just uh, that's what we're here to do. You can understand the emotions of both these youngsters. Troy Smith, he took illegal assistance, $500, if you will, after the Michigan game, so he sat out the bowl game. Zwick beat Oklahoma State. Then they sat him out for the opener. Zwick won that against Miami. Troy is eligible again. We will see him here tonight. Here is Ginn. So Ginn is hit right away by Cedric Griffin. Now he is number eight and he has started 32 games. And Cedric Griffin is a very, very good defensive back. And Cedric Griffin is the guy in the newspapers that said, uh, I don't think they run great routes around here. At least Ginn does it. And the guys I faced in practice are just as good. So he's so far keeping Ginn in front of him. You know, Brent, when you watch Justin Zwick, he's really grown up in front of our eyes. He's a much better passer now than he was a year ago when he got benched. Back in that passing formation in the shotgun. There's that late shift of the nose man, but they can't get to Pittman. You saw the nose man come in 
and that was Larry Dibbles. He made the late shift and helped blow that play up. So we're at the bottom of the hour here with Jack Aroot and Gary Danielson. I'm Brent Musburger. Pleasure to have you along tonight for what uh, figures to be a very exciting, emotional game. Uh, we think it's a record crowd here tonight at the Horseshoe. Tremendous weather. Uh, it is a perfect, perfect night for football. Both coaches probably would like to play run the football, but when you've got guys like number 10, Vince Young, and number 7, Ted Ginn, you got to open it up and use your talent. The base 4-3 all the way. Swick steps away from the pressure. Can he run for the first down? Does not. Now there is the element that gives number 10, Troy Smith, a little bit of an edge as Robinson, Brian Robinson, their very talented defensive lineman, makes the stop. Uh, Troy Smith is a little more elusive, just a little bit quicker. They've been selling this on the idea that Zwick is fast enough, but there you could see just a little bit of a difference. Well, when you're a drop back quarterback, you have to be a very good drop back quarterback, and that time, it seemed like a little bit of confusion. Give that one to the defensive coordinator, Gene Chizik. Ross is back deep again for Trapasso's punt. Waving everybody away from it. This is going to take a Buckeye bounce. And then back to a Texas one-yarder to the 16. Well, he's coming back, folks. Rushed for 192 yards against Michigan. He got 52 against the Buckeyes. College football on ABC Sports is brought to you by Jeep. Trail rated capability only in a Jeep 4x4. IBM, become an on demand business. IBM can help. Taco Bell, think outside the bun. And Capital One, what's in your wallet as you look down? What's in the horseshoe? More than 100,000 here tonight. So Vince Young and the Longhorns, their second possession coming out from the 11-yard line. And Jamal Charles, who rushed for a freshman record 135 yards for Texas, is now the running back. He is to Vince's right. They fake. They're going to throw on first down. Hit him on a crossing pattern just shy of midfield Billy Pittman. A nice straight route on this one. He runs right by A.J. Hawk. Ohio State does not like to substitute. And watch this beautiful route coming right down the middle of the field. And Vince Young does a beautiful job of putting it right there. Folks, there is one thing that they did not talk a lot about uh, up here in Columbus that is pretty obvious. Vince Young is a very good faker in that shotgun. Here is his quarterback draw now. Gets across midfield, stumbles just shy of the 45-yard line, tripped up by Ubote, who comes back as a defensive back. And uh, Gary, take a look at our cheap rushing playbook here, pardon. Well, we've seen him run, we've seen him pass, we've seen him scramble, but this is a designed run. The tackle will go across, fake to the back, and watch the defensive end to the left side of the screen, David Patterson. He goes for the fake, nobody blocks him, and off Vince Young goes, running a successful play. This time, not a fake. Charles, the nifty freshman for the first down for the Horns. Well, John Saunders and the gang are here in Columbus. That means that Sam Ryan is holding down the fort with all the updates. And uh, Sam, what's going on with South Carolina and Steve Spurrier? Well, Brent, we'll show you with our Taco Bell update as we head to Athens. South Carolina's Blake Mitchell hooks up with Sidney Rice, the touchdown. Now the two-point conversion. This is to tie it. No good. Bulldogs still leading this one 17-15 fourth quarter, Brent. All right, Sam, I imagine Steve threw the, uh, threw the visor. He had a man wide open. Reaching is Thomas. Very close to a first down as he reached out at the end, and he's got it in Schlegel. The middle linebacker back on him. Let's take a look at Vince's delivery right here on this one. It is sidearm. There's no doubt about that. He's 6'6". Watch him fling this ball right here. He's on his toes. He actually throws it below his helmet level. But you know what? When you're 6'6", you can do that. Consistency is the most important thing from Vince, not how high his elbow is. First quarter, Charles again. 
come across just shy of the 26 and uh, uh, Jack Vince Young is going to be a big story all night partner. Boy indeed he is but at the beginning of last season Vince Young underachieved at least as far as Mac Brown as head coach was concerned. So after the Missouri game he called Vince Young into his office and he put this tape into the VCR. It was a tape of the highlights of Vince Young in high school where he played it fast and loose. He turned to his aspiring quarterback and he said that's what I want from you. Vince Young said I understand coach but you gotta let me be me. Ever since then he has been. And Bobby Carpenter, the senior whose daddy, the high school coach at Lancaster, up to make the stop. Hops played in the NFL for some time. Carpenter's an interesting story for a linebacker, folks. Now, here's a young man who plays the piano. He was on the high school swimming team, and he wants bowled at 240. And I dare say he's got the look of an NFL linebacker Abs to him, too. Absolutely. And now he weighs over 240. He goes about 250 pounds, still runs sub 4640. Second down and a dozen for Young and the Horns. Pocket hole, slant, incomplete, and there's flag came flying in. You could see that. Yabodi was there. Yep. So Yabodi and Sally was closing fast on the play. Vince Young got knocked down on that throw also, but it was man-to-man -man coverage. When you move the ball against Ohio State, they come with the blitz. And that time Yabodi got there a little bit before the ball, and that was an easy call that time. Well, I thought it was really close watching this. Uh, it's a 15 yarder, of course, in the college game and an automatic first down. Pass interference, defense, number 26. Spot foul, automatic first down. Vince Young can just flick that ball. He does not even have to step into his throws. Back in the shotgun, the ball is inside the Bucks' 20 yard line. Now, both times, if you're a Texas fan, both times, Young and the offense have moved the ball against this defensive front. Here comes Vince off the fake again. And it was whistled down. He'll hand it to the field judge and head on back. Yeah, a lot of times that's an illegal formation called the illegal procedure. It's going to be on Texas. One of the things that I see with Vince Young that you don't see, let me uh, listen here to the uh, call first. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 16, offense. It's a five-yard penalty. It remains first down. That's the tight end. Uh, Tom, one of the things I see with Vince, folks, is you know, is that he really enjoys what he's doing back there. Uh, he is very comfortable with being a quarterback. There is no question about it. I wondered what we were going to see this year with Vince Young. And I think Mac Brown's biggest recruiting job this year is making sure the big fella sticks around for his senior season down there in Austin. And it's not the screen. To the running back to the 10 yard line short of the first down is a freshman Charles. So, uh, you know, in fact, we talked to Vince when Gary was down in Austin. Uh, he asked him about enjoying himself on the field. Here's what he told Gary Yeah, I like to go mess with the defense, uh, mess with the coaches. I mean, trainers, anybody out there, for everybody just have a good time, just love being and doing their job. I mean, I mean, that's what God put us out here for. Just a love doing your job, whatever you're doing, and being a great, humble guy. Here's Charles slipping, battling toward that first down, that yellow line down there. Good-looking freshman running back. Coming off that big week against Louisiana Lafayette. Now he was twisting his way for some extra yardage down there. I think the Buckeyes have found out early on that they're going to have to play against Charles and the rest of this Horn team. Remember, Way back when was it 2002 these were the two top recruited classes in the country Texas and Mac Brown were number one with Vince Young but the Buckeyes were number two and for a long time the uh, the Buckeye fellows have been saying man we'd like to get on the same field and prove who's number one Gary well and, and you know what's happened with these guys is they realize that and they realize the stakes in this game and when you were talking about it, as you look at these two recruiting classes they always tell us let's wait two three years and measure it well We've waited two, three years to measure it. You know, those recruiting gurus, they're pretty good. They, they are. Right. <laughs> hey, folks, keep an eye on this big fella, number 37. I can hear all those fans down in Austin saying, get Henry Melton in there. And he's on the field. When I first saw him at practice in Austin, I thought he was a defensive lineman. And there he is. He scored a couple of touchdowns. He's number 37. He's 276 pounds. He's listed at 270. 
weighed in at 276. How do we know? The offensive lineman who was right behind him, he told us that's how much he weighed. And here he is from behind 37. He's got a blocking back right in front of him. Third down and one. Why not? Here he comes. Bucks were ready, and Melton was too. First down. First and goal. Everett up to hit him. They knew what was coming. Well, he's uh, Max Truck. M-A-C apostrophe S Truck, because he's Mac Truck, and he's Max Truck, and he is a running back by trade. He's not a defensive end made into a running back. You see his knee goes down right there. And then defensive end playing running back, he's a running back who some projected as a defensive end, but the way he looks, I don't know. He is comfortable with the football. A neat nine play drive. They drove the ball with their first possession. And kicked a field goal at the 10-03 mark to make it 3-0. Now we've got 145 to go in the opening quarter. Takes the handoff, throws for a touchdown. Came right back to Billy Pittman. And Pittman has been his most active receiver here tonight. So the horns in two possessions, they shock Columbus with 10 points. And if there's one way, one way to quiet 100,000, it's get on that board early. Inside receiver, you can see outside technique by the defensive back, Dante Whitner, and a perfect throw. Take a look inside. The play action pass held Anthony Schlegel just one second to make an easy touchdown throw. You know. He reminds me of a young Randall Cunningham. Yeah, I, I agree with that, Gary. Uh, Pino, and there's a there's a little touch of Michael Vick though to his running down He's field. not I'll as shifty, but he but he's just so as he fast. Pass, he's just okay. as fast. And Troy but, Smith, is it about time to bring in Troy? Well, we shall see. Coach Trussell will make up his mind. He's down by ten. Richmond McGee on to kick it off for the Longhorns and lead by 10. And the always dangerous Ginn and San Antonio Holmes are back deep as Mac Brown and Jim Trussell. Lock horns here. Mac is in his eighth year, Trussell in his fifth year. In games decided by six points or less, folks, Mac Brown has 14 wins and six losses, and Trussell has 10 wins and only three losses. Runs up to the two. Has a blocking wall. Motors pass again. Looks for daylight. 40, 45. Again, great field position. And Michael Huff, the strong safety, may have saved the touchdown. That's a 48 yard and return. And 15 late on the play. Texas going to get 15 more yards. Late hit by Texas. They actually knocked Ted Ginn down after the whistle. Dead ball, personal foul, kicking team. Number 27. Ted Ginn right here. Watch him all the way. Number seven. You're going to see Santonio San go, and then Ted Ginn with his speed will catch up. He'll get a block. Just outside the frame, I guess, but he gets knocked down. A buzz in the crowd. Troy Smith, the junior, after a two-game suspension. So happy to be back on the field. <laughs> 386 total yards against the Wolverines. First and 10. There's the draw out of the shotgun. Reaching out. And uh, let's check in with Sam Ryan in New York. What's up with the Gators of Florida? Oh, Brent, they're getting it done in the swamp. Chris Leak looking, launches this one to Chad Jackson. All alone there, 80 yards with a touchdown. No problem, his fourth of the season. 34-3 Florida dominating this one over Louisiana Tech. We're going to send it back to you now, Brent. All right, Sam. Urban Meyer. In his second game, and our folks ever excited down Gainesville way. Man, second down now for Troy Smith. Pitch on the option play. First down. There is Pittman, and there's the difference that Troy Smith brings to the offense when he puts himself in motion. And they cross the 20-yard line. There is a penalty marker, I believe, however, so hang on. 
It's going to be on Ohio State. Don't doubt a holding call coming out from on that option play. It took a little longer, and the wide receivers were downfield trying to stay with their blocks, and they held. Holding. Offense. Number 50. It's a 10 yard penalty. Well, football will be in full swing this weekend. Uh, Sunday night, the Colts and the Ravens. Ray Lewis teeing it up defensively. And, of course, Peyton Manning and all that gang will see if they've got the same beat to that offense. Coverage begins with NFL primetime presented by Miller Lite at Sunday night, 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. 10-0 here. Texas having scored 10 points with its first two possessions of this football game. Troy Smith. It is first series since returning for Coach Trussell against the base 4-3. And here comes Smith. He crosses the 35-yard line to the 33. Michael Griffin, along with Aaron Harris, make the stop. And a reminder, next Saturday, we've got regional coverage, and you will be able to watch one of those games. That Miami-Clemson game down in ACC land, that now looms as one of the big ones of the weekend. Clemson again in dramatic fashion wins, and uh, Miami will be trying to come off that loss to Florida State earlier. So we've got two number tens, and Troy saying, come on, let's get everybody fired up here. This game is far from over. But Vince Young has been the major story here so far. He has the Longhorns ahead. Ten zip. Today's singular All-American flashback, Archie Griffin. During his senior campaign, Griffin extended his record of consecutive 100-yard games to 31, leading Ohio State to their fourth straight Rose Bowl appearance. Archie finished his career as a Buckeye with over 5,000 yards rushing and remains the only two-time winner of the Heisman Trophy. Text vote to 87654 now on your singular wireless phone to play All-America trivia for a chance to win a trip to the national championship game. Sports welcomes you back to this week's BCS Spotlight Game presented by ADT. When I got the ball in my hand and somebody's chasing me, you know, it's like when you're, when you're young and the dog was chasing you, you're not going to let the dog catch you. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of horns over there that are trying to, trying to catch number 10 of the Buckeyes here tonight. This is uh, Troy Smith's first drive of the game, and... Uh, and of course, it has been the most impressive win so far. You'll see if he can get the Bucks on the scoreboard here. Gary, what's your feeling? Uh, I've watched Troy practice twice this year, and he is a very good football player and a good thrower. And this team believes they can win with Troy Smith. Changing things up. Antonio Pittman switches to the left side. Dog got him by the tail that time there. Well, <laughs> Troy Smith and the uh, Buckeyes trailing Texas by 10. Just underway here in the second quarter. Now this would be almost automatic with Nugent last year. I mean, this was his range where he just kicked them. He had just ice water in his veins. Now, you know, Nugent's with the Jets. And let's see if this is a sure three points for Jim Trestle like it was in the past. This will be a 45-yarder for Josh. High, long, got it. Buckeyes are on the board. Josh Houston's field goal. And it's 10-3 with Texas up by seven. Columbus, Ohio on a gorgeous Saturday night first meeting ever between Ohio State and Texas and after the field goal the Buckeyes will kick it off from the five yard line Terrell Brown the other number five looking for a hole to the 31 yard line well Gary you talk about it so much leadership and what does Troy Smith bring to this team well, Troy Smith beat Michigan. That's what you have to do when you're at Ohio State. And those players watch Troy in practice. He has that air about him. He thinks he's good. He thinks he's going to move the ball. Vince Young has already convinced his team. Troy Smith has also. But, you know, he made a mistake. And he had to now work his way back in being the regular quarterback. 
Now here is Vince Young. Rushed for 56 yards. He's also thrown a touchdown pass. And the inside handoff goes to the uh, Selvin Young, who's back on the field. And time now for a moment for our Affleck trivia question. You know, we've got two Texans starting defensively for Ohio State, but who was the last player from the state of Ohio to start for the Longhorn? Now, you just said never down there. That's not right. You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's happened. It has happened. <laughs> Ohio State has switched, Brent, from going with their linebackers to now playing three down linemen, three linebackers, and five defensive backs. They've switched up against this formation defensively. Well, they're going to put four down. Well, it's they Bobby put it back Carpenter. Carpenter is down, yeah. rushing from the right side, and they completed it against that. And Lima Swede makes his first grab, and Schlegel, the linebacker, back to make the stop. Number 51, the transfer to the Air Force Academy. They now have five defensive backs on the field, three, four, five of them, and Bobby Carpenter is down this play. A little bit of a different look, but you can see he's off right there. Vince Young knows exactly where to go for the ball. Easy pitch and catch. So here's another first and ten. You can see only three down. They crowd the front. Going to come on it. And he handed it off to Selvin Young. And uh, Sambo, what about the Gamecocks? They just couldn't get it done, Brent, today. From Athens we go. Checking this one, less than a minute left for the 19th South Carolina. Blake Mitchell over the middle, Chris Clark. Laterals to Sidney Rice, but Steve Spurrier, Gamecocks come up short. Georgia wins this one, 17-15 the final. Brent, we're going to send it back out to you. Yeah, it's closer, Sam, than uh, that folks expected down there. And uh, remember, he had a man wide open for that two-point conversion. Might have taken the, the dogs on into overtime. So uh, South Carolina. There's Carpenter trying to get to Young for the backside. Throws it incomplete. Man, Carpenter was closing hard, but Young, you know the great quarterbacks, they feel the pressure. They just know as we check in with Jack Aru, Jack. Well, Brent, we've all followed what's been going on in the Gulf Coast. The remnants of Hurricane Katrina and both these universities have taken a lot of the evacuees and students from some of the schools that are closed. But for Greg Davis, the coordinator here at Texas, it is hit particularly close to home. His daughter Stacy and son Greg Jr. were affected. <laughs> but Greg Jr. reports that he's going to stay with Tulane as they move now and will run out of Ruston, Louisiana the rest of the football season. All right. Jack, and uh, thankfully that family was uh, was okay. It's, uh, young looking for a receiver is going to go down. He's got to be careful in that situation. He's lucky he didn't lose the football. Dante Whitner, a hard-hitting safety coming up on him, and Vince has got to learn in that situation to, there, there are better days to fight than that one, and you can see Carpenter limping off the field for the Buckeyes. Zone blitz this time coming from the field, but Vince Young has got that ball. He's tackled by Dante Whitner right there. Now watch him hold this ball. He's trying to get rid of it, get rid of it, get rid of it. He gets knocked down, and he just pops up and runs off the field. Does nothing phases this guy, and everybody on Texas bench saw him just pop up, say no big deal. McGee punts it with Holmes and Ginn to field this one. Back by the 12, slips the first man. Gets to the, let me check that out. That was Ginn, just like I said. He makes the move, he makes the move, but he couldn't get the afterburners on. So we'll take a break. As again was uh, searching for open sky and couldn't find it. College football on ABC is brought to you by Aflac. Ask about it at work. The Home Depot, you can do it, we can help. Outback Steakhouse, no rules, just right. And Pontiac, go online to vote for this week's Pontiac game-changing performance. The first meeting ever. And Texas led it by 10 before the Buckeyes kicked a field goal to get on the scoreboard. Uh, Torrey Smith with that pull out of the option. Shakes a would-be tackler and almost throws a bad pick. 
Drew Kelson was oh, standing man. right there. And uh, now it's time for the Pacific Life game summary game. So here we are, the Pacific Life game summary so far. And Vince Young moving the ball with his legs on their first two series. And off a of fake, then threw for a touchdown pass. So his legs set up their opening field goal. His arm accounts for the touchdown. Troy Smith off the Buckeye bench. And he brought a spark to the Ohio State offense. Second down and 10. And Troy Smith was fortunate there. Pittman, 25 30. Out of bounds at the 35. Michael Griffin, Marcus's twin brother. So number 27 gets it done, but it's a 14 yard gain for number 25. If you look at the Texas defense, they are undersized. That's the style that Gene Chizik likes at linebacker. At Auburn last year, Brent, his linebackers, and they won every game, were 210, 207, and 200 pounds. He's asked the Texas linebackers to get smaller, too. I think Ohio State has to run at them a little bit before they start throwing. They need to see if Texas can pick them up running the ball right at them. Four down for the horns on bottle the snap. Smith picks it up on the run. Incomplete, and it will be second down and 10. And uh, Jack, uh, what's the situation with Carpenter? We saw him come over to get some treatment on that foot. Yeah, it's the left uh, ankle and the foot, Brent. And I was a bit surprised when they pulled the shoe off that he doesn't use ankle tape. He does now. The athletic trainer has added some tape. They're putting the shoe back on. He's been cleared to return to battle when OSU goes on defense. Three outstanding linebackers, Jack. And there's uh, one of them. He, he, you know, he said something that, you know, the media had fun with it and talk radio, I'm sure, for a couple of days. He said, we don't want Vince Young to leave the horseshoe a Heisman Trophy candidate. I'm sure that the defensive players say that about great players all around the country. Vince just kind of shrugged down in Texas and went on about his business. Off of what we've seen, folks, he's still a Heisman Trophy candidate. Now the inside handoff, just shy of the 40-yard line Pittman, and we check in with Sam Ryan again in New York. And Brent, could this be the Pontiac game-changing performance? Notre Dame, Michigan, Wolverines building momentum. Chad Henney, the quarterback sneak from inside the one-yard line. He was ruled down. It was reviewed. The replays here show he fumbled. Iris recovered, held on for the win. Nominate your Pontiac game-changing performance at ESPN.com. Keyword Pontiac, Brent. Yeah, Sam, that was an uh, interesting instant replay. It took a while to get the uh, the angle that convinced him. It was a good call. Fumbled the snap right away on the center exchange. And complete across midfield. And that time they put it in Anthony Gonzalez's hands. Well, let's go back to the Aflac trivia question. Who was the last player for the state of Ohio to start for the Longhorn? And, folks, he was a good one. Jam Jones, you remember him, the running back, back in the late 70s out of Youngstown, Ohio. Now, Jim Trussell was the coach here in Columbus during that era. He just said, I'd have never lost Jim. <laughs> I'd have never let him get out of Youngstown. Where Remember was. early in the game when Anthony Gonzalez dropped the pass from Justin Zwick? Ohio State went back to the same play, and it worked that time for a first down. Gonzalez makes the catch. Nick Mangold ready to snap the shotgun. Here's the quarterback draw all the way. Here's Smith, first down, and he hauls it out of bounds. Uh, folks, uh, some of you youngins down there, down Texas, where you don't remember him, okay? He led the team in rushing four times, and I know you Horn fans love to see that because that's the Sooners he's batter. <laughs> and Oklahoma came back today and won, and of course they've beaten, well, they've beaten Mac five straight times, Gary. Is that what that thing is? Right? Um, I know I've done three of them. <laughs> that's for sure. I've been there three Let, times. Let's send Keith Jackson in there. <laughs> huh? Why don't we do Yo, Keith, you doing anything on the eighth? First down and 10. That Ohio State offensive line is starting to feel themselves on this field. They're starting to get some push up front with Troy at quarterback. Pittman is jammed. And that time the, the horns were ready. Some of the big fellows. Robinson, number 39, 36, 3, 260. So interesting that somebody that big could have been a been a track star. He has a 40-inch vertical leap. He blocked four kicks 
when he was high school and uh, one of the track team uh, he was on he was he sort of shot 62 four right. discus 183 feet I mean this is a this is a heck of an athlete right came here. here as a linebacker and he grew into a defensive end kind of a hybrid player to the outside there's so many great athletes on these two teams here tonight second down and ten here he comes again obviously the Buckeyes have seen something that they can exploit. Bobino, remember there is no Derek Johnson, their great, great linebacker of a year ago. He will be suiting up tomorrow for Dick Vermeil and the Kansas City Chiefs. And Derek Johnson forced nine fumbles last year when Greg Robinson was the defensive coordinator. Now Harris is a is a terrific middleman, and he was there. You cannot replace a Derek Johnson. He was. Uh, just one of the best outside linebackers we've seen during the last decade and uh, I'm sure Vermeil and the uh, Chiefs are happy to have him they'll tee it up against Herman Edwards and the New York Jets tomorrow as the NFL jumps into full swing they show blitz and they may have jumped or the lineman may have stood up on him Huff showed blitz when he stepped into that hole and it may have caused a lineman to flinch let's see prior to the snap false start number 77 offense Remains third down. And that's Rob Sims, the 310 pound senior guard. So at Valvoline, the halftime show will be coming up. John Craig and Aaron are here. They'll look at all the highlights from the game, including Notre Dame's upset of Michigan. There they are. Fellas getting ready over there. You bet. Yeah, good to see you, John. <laughs> Craig, there's big Aaron over there in the left. Now, he wasn't gloating about the Irish, but you know he's happy, folks. He's really happy. They're 2 0. Oh. Aaron, he's about the size of this running back, Melton, that we looked at for a time for the Orange, Gary. Now that I think Same about it. Same weight. Third down at eight. Here's Troy. Pocket holds firm, goes deep. Santonio! Touchdown! Touchdown! Santonio Holmes, the other wide receiver. 36 yards. And the Buckeyes are just an extra point away from tying up the game of September. One on one, Texas has their best man-to-man -man guy, Cedric Griffin, on him, but watch this perfectly thrown ball. When you throw it like that, there's no coverage that can stop it, and Santonio San catches it over his shoulder. Troy Smith throws a strike. Houston folks as you watch this throw let's just say one thing right now end of any quarterback controversy right here a strike and we're deadlocked when I came in young it was like go for the big ball or do something big so you can get in the end zone now it's take it play by play now you can just imagine how a young man like Vince Young starts to grow up. Attended Houston's Madison High School. He said when he was a kid and he played baseball or basketball or whatever in the neighborhood, he was always the first draft choice. So he said, I kind of figured then that I, I was pretty good. <laughs> He's a fine young man. Josh Houston with the ball on the tee. Did he come out? Did he come out? That's a safety. He's got to get out if he doesn't escape. That's out. Taylor. Oh, no. He's gone down the sideline. Have you ever seen anything oh, like my that, goodness. folks? Just when you think you've seen it all, <laughs> there comes a moment, a moment in a game when you say, I never saw anything quite like that. He broke the plane. When you break the plane right here, watch him. He comes out, touches the line right there with his right toe. He looks down, and now if he's tackled, that's a safety. One missed tackle. Outruns the guy. Stan White right there. He can't run with him. Gets it, and it looked like he might have a chance, and Yabote makes the play. So Yabote saves a possible touchdown. Vince Young with the score tied at 10. Back in the shotgun. Young keeps it in the middle. He runs for eight yards, and uh, 
Back we go, Gary, to this uh, touchdown. Looks at X's and O's here. Here's the middle of the field, right down the middle of the field. There's only two guys to the one half of the whole field. If you're the quarterback, Brent, where are you going to throw it? Yes, sir. Right, right over there, there, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Your Let eyes have play. to light up. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> There's no one else on the other half of the field. It's like going out by yourself and practicing. <laughs> Seven and a half minutes. Not a lot of film study needed on that one, is there? No, sir. Fumble, and he gets down on it. I think he got down on the ball. The Buckeyes, yes, you see, the referee's right there. Right on top of it. Once his knees go down, uh, you know, in the NFL, you have to be down by contact, but uh, not in the college games. That's quite a difference, so Mac Brown survives that scare. Mac Brown and the Horns were up by 10. Now they're deadlocked, 7 8 Troy Smith has come in. He's been the difference for the Buckeyes here in this game. Nickelback is in for the Buckeyes. Mitchell gives him five defensive back. The bell starts to toll. Whitner bluffed blitz. Now he comes up to the line of scrimmage. They've got Young contained. And they've got him intercepted. And A.J. Hawk has got it, and he's rumbling. 25-20, down to the 17-yard line. A.J. Hawk, that's his seventh career pick. Troy Smith got away with one just like this. This time, sometimes you think you're just too good. Kudla gets him, tosses it up, and A.J. Hawk, who Brent, they projected to be a fullback at Ohio State, he turned out to be an All-American. Watch, he feels the speed behind him. He protects the ball, and he gets tattooed, but he'll take that one. Ohio State, first and 10 on the 18. Troy Smith will bring the offense back out. Ball is on the 18-yard line. A.J. Hawk, the All-American linebacker, does it again. First decision in the game by Drew Tressel. I think it's a good one. The plan was to go two, two, and two. But Troy Smith is hot, and they have to put points on the board here. And they inherit the football in a red zone after the interception. Here's the quarterback draw, and it is Troy Smith and not Vince Young who is starting to dominate the game. Tim Crowder makes the stop. Well, aerial coverage for the game, courtesy of the Outback Steakhouse Airship, Bloomin' Onion 1, the Outback Steakhouse, Specializes in college football and PGA golf coverage. Look for the Bloomin' Onion at sporting events throughout the year. And it's a gorgeous night to be up above the uh, the horseshoe here in Columbus. You can see all the red light. Burn orange, though. There's a lot of Texas fans. Some of them uh, paid face value and some of them paid a whole lot more. Folks, tickets upwards of $1,000 on eBay for this one. Second down and six. Here he comes again, same play behind the right side of that offensive line. And the Texas defensive coaches, Chizik and friends, are going to have to shore up the left side of the defense because Smith is having a field day running over there. Watch Nick Mangold right here. He makes all the calls on this line. He turns around, he switches the plays, he comes off. He's got a lot of smarts, a three-year starter, and he makes all the run blocking calls and the pass protection calls. We've got a timeout called by the Buckeyes. German Troy is talking it over. We're even at 10 apiece. You're watching the BCS Spotlight Game presented by ADT, and it's a dandy. The Longhorns went out by 10. The Buckeyes have battled back, and we're all even with 5.15 to go here in the first half. Third and three for Troy Smith. You see the first down line. Sacked. Thrown down by Crowder from Tyler, Texas. Went to John Tyler High School, and a uh, huge stop by number 80. Great coverage in the secondary that time. Troy Smith was trying to go the ball in a wheel route. It kind of flattened up to Teddy Ginn, but Texas would give him nothing. And smartly, Troy Smith held onto that ball. They're still in field goal range. So Houston now for the lead. Trapasso, the punter, is the holder. This is a 36-yarder, and it would, if good, 
Give Ohio State its first lead of the night. Does just that. So the Buckeyes rally from a 10 point deficit and with four and a half minutes to go up by three. Now it's Vince Young's turn to show something. The Big Ten Conference was moved to action by the devastation visited on the people of the Gulf Coast region by Hurricane Katrina. In the spirit of public service and friendship, Big Ten institutions have opened their doors to students displaced by this disaster and have responded with a variety of financial initiatives intended to support the victims. I encourage everyone in the Big Ten family to continue their generosity as our fellow citizens rebuild their homes and communities. The two quarterbacks that we are watching, Grant, they both have the same number, but did you know that they have a relationship that started all the way back in high school when Troy and Vince both went to the Elite 11 quarterback school? Now, earlier today, there was the embrace, two friends that were going to do battle on the gridiron. They've talked to each other before the game. I asked them, any trash talking? They said, no, it's all above board. And here's Houston's kickoff, Jack. Taylor and Brown again are back deep. And he quickly takes a knee, <laughs> and he does not flirt with the goal line this time. It'll come out on the 20-yard uh, line. Again, let me remind you now, we've got our coverage in uh, Miami, Clemson, Oklahoma, UCLA. Most of you will see one of those two games, and then the rest of you will check out these Buckeyes against San Diego State. And Nebraska will host a reeling, a reeling Pittsburgh team last night, which lost to Ohio. And congratulations to Frank Solich, sellout crowd down there. ESPN2 televised the game. I went over to Champs here in uh, Columbus, watched with a crowd. It was unbelievable watching what was happening. Fake to Selvin Young, buys Vince time, and he completes it. Out of bounds, and Everett makes the stop on Sweet, and we check in with John Saunders. Here with Craig and Aaron, and coming up on the following halftime show, we're going to take a look at other scores and highlights, including a bad day for the Big Ten. They're trying to avoid that here. Michigan losing, Iowa losing. Yeah, they are, and we're going to see if it's going to be another bad day for the Big Ten since Iowa and Michigan lost. Hey, Vincent Young was running the football well. We'll show you what Ohio State did to slow him down and see if Texas can make an adjustment now. All, right, all the day scores and highlights coming up on the following halftime show. Brent. Fumble by Young. Selvin Young fumbled the ball. The Buckeyes think they have it. Yes, the umpire agrees with him. A.J. Hawk in the middle of things again. He is some kind of hawk, folks. And I'll tell you, that Ohio State defensive line they don't get a lot of publicity, but they are starting to stuff this run inside. They're stunting. You can see how they move. There's nowhere to run, and Salvin Young turns it loose, and A.J. picks it out of midair. Yes, indeed. And we will start, I'll bet you, start to see those freshmen for Texas because Jamal Charles and Henry Melton last week rushed for 200 yards. There's a lot of talent and Young has been known to put the ball on the ground. Charles has already rushed for four yards a carry here tonight with three carries. Texas did a good job only giving up three points last time. Let's see if they can hold again. Smith goes down at the 36 of the arms of Kelson. I, you know, hey, I got to tell John and the gang over there that Ohio State's a Big Ten team. You know, yeah, they're winning. a couple of schools. They're winning. <laughs> they came back. Well, okay. This is the this is the key one for them, I guess. <laughs> hey, Drew Kelson, one of those shifts by Gene Chinzik, the defensive coordinator. Kelson was a safety a year ago, undersized, only weighs 214 pounds. I want speed, Gene said. He moved him up to linebacker, and you see him attack that play. From behind Smith, back to the shotgun. Buckeyes using two tight ends and they release. Whoa. Oh, what a pop. Ball was caught by Roy Hall, who lined up as a tight end. He's a wide out, and Aaron Ross said none of that. That was a misread by Troy Smith, and it's a tough one on a slant. He thought Texas was going to be in man to man coverage. He thought the corner had the wide receiver, he thought the tight end would be all alone. 
Texas let the wide receiver go and just standing right there for that tight end. Smith checking the scoreboard sees it. Got about two and a half minutes to go here. This Texas defense with their neck. This is two huge stops. Third down and 19. Pittman, number 25, off to his right. Same formation it scored with, but Texas is not doing the same look. Pull back out of the option look, fire it, caught, stumbles, first down. Put it into the hands of Gonzalez for a first down, and Gonzalez makes the play of 21 yards on that huge third down. What a great awareness. This was a fake option. Watch Gonzalez. He knows he's a little short of the first down. He loses his balance, and he dives forward to make sure he gets enough for the first down. Great awareness by Anthony Gonzalez. Well, the Buckeyes just convert a third and 19. They're back inside the red zone, and uh, we've got a whistle down on the field. Ohio State takes a timeout. The They're going to make sure. Take a timeout. And Mac trying to rally the troops again. Two minutes to go here in the first half, and we'll be right back. We are competitors on the field, but partners in our hurricane relief efforts. We encourage everyone to show true school spirit. Call 1-800-HELP-NOW, visit redcross.org, or give to the relief organization of your choice. So the Buckeyes up by three, and we've got an opportunity to remind you again, Monday night football at 9 Eastern. The Eagles and the Falcons. That's a rematch. Who do you like in that one, Gary, down there? Uh, Michael Vick going to be too tough? Well, it's in Atlanta. I think Michael Vick and an Ohio State emerging player, Michael Jenkins, is starting to be one of those go-to guys. Remember, he was one of the key players on that national championship team. Yes, he was, my what friend. What was that called? Holy what? <laughs> Holy Buckeye? Against my boilers that day? I know. You guys have never forget. <laughs> no, it. I was happy for him. I really. They now, deserved um, it that year. The Buckeyes, Gary, have converted. 50% of third down so far in this game. Why don't we just say Troy Smith has? He is keep keeping this defense from Texas completely off balance with the run pass. Great calling of the game by Jim Tressel here. Another first down in the red zone. Swing and dropped by Ginn. I believe Ginn should have hung on to that. Ball. Yeah, that's two of them. But you know what? Come on, Teddy. You played quarterback before. They're both from the same high school, by the way. They're great friends. You actually. cannot throw the ball that perfectly. Ted's saying, I want it on my front shoulder. And Troy's saying, come on. What do you think? This is not easy. I got four guys trying to hit me, and I can barely see you. Catch a ball and run with it, Teddy. Yeah, they went to Cleveland, uh, Glenville High School. And uh, Teddy Sr., Teddy Ginn Sr., was their coach. He was also the track coach. Recently won another state championship. Uh, he had a little bit of a uh, health scare here recently. I asked Ted how his father was, and he said he's fine. So uh, if he's not here tonight and watching at home, we wish him the best. Again, there's that double tight end look. And the horns want to come. The slant. Holmes has got it. First down, close to the five-yard line. Van Holmes is a good-looking wideout. You He's bet. out of Bell Glade, Florida, and he got away from all those Florida schools to come up here to Columbus. This one is pretty easy. When you run routes this square like this, you catch passes, and that's what Santonio Holmes did on this one. Came down, squared it right off on that slant. Look at that throw right in the open area. When you're a route runner, and notice Brent, receiver, when he thinks it's zone, you don't have to run that slant full speed. Come under there under control, make it easy. Interesting that they empty it out. They line draw. Troy up alone. They give him an extra draw. blocker. There's the look. And the horn sniffed that one out. Everybody, everybody felt that was coming. And uh, Michael Griffin makes the stop. So we're at the bottom of the hour with uh, Gary Danielson and Jack of Root. I'm Brett Musburger along for what has shaped up for some time is the game of game of September. They'll go back down to Austin next year and they will play the rematch game. And uh, I was joking with everybody. Is it going to be a night game? I said, Mac, we want to have a night game. He said, no, no, we're going to make them play at <laughs> high noon in the heat and humidity. 
if, <laughs> the for the coaches, yeah, it's a big deal. But the coaches are thinking, I want some more Louisiana Lafayettes before we get to the Big 12. Folks. Here they come. Troy Smith. And through to through to coverage that time, and it was uh, deflected by Robinson. I would have liked to have seen an option call on that play. I think right now, third and long, it's going to be tough to stick it in there against this Texas defense. Does Texas, does Ohio State have some type of a shotgun option play? Might be a good call. They faked the option on third down last time and threw the pass. I like to get Troy out of the pocket with an option or a pass run option. Watch where that fellow number four goes. He'll be at the right side of the formation. And They'll put Ginn back Ginn there also. There's right there. There's Teddy Ginn. There's Santonio Holmes. Can they cause confusion here on this third down? Middle incomplete. Oh, and they were throwing away from the big fellas that time. And nothing doing as uh, Aaron Harris, the middle linebacker. Like you know, make the stop. I think that play, all that whole drive got kind of stalled on that first down call of the quarterback draw. Troy needed to take that ball right up the middle. It wasn't there. He ended up losing yards and it cost him. Houston again. Stays on track with a 25-yarder, and the Buckeyes' lead is six. 16-10 on the Houston field goals. You know, I, uh, folks, our thoughts and prayers, of course, are still with the victims of Hurricane Katrina, and I know some of you who, who got out uh, are watching tonight. We wish you the best, and want to remind folks that you want to help contribute to the Red Cross. There's the phone number, 1-800-HELP-NOW, www.redcross.org. And uh, also a reminder that on Monday night, the uh, National Football League will join in the uh, Hurricane Relief Weekend. There will be a special doubleheader beginning at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. And uh, they'll have a telethon. The Saints and the Giants will go first at 7.30 on ABC. Then at 9 o'clock, the Redskins and the Cowboys move center stage. The Saints and the Giants will finish on ESPN so uh, two of the family of networks uh, get together for a, for a great great cause NFL hurricane uh, relief weekend and that will be Monday night on ABC Brent maybe a key point of this football game two turnovers their own territory for Texas Ohio State gets the minimum six points this game could have be broken wide open with two touchdowns the Texas defense answered but the Texas offense hasn't been able to do much lately. The Buckeyes change up their defensive pattern, and they've had Vince Young surrounded so far. Fielded on the 20-yard line by Brown. Picks his way to the 31-yard line. And it'll be, there's a penalty flag. I think we saw a late push. I think you saw it right in the middle of your screen down there. Let's, uh, Let's see what happens. A Buckeye player pushed back. Uh, at least uh, maybe that was the second act. It's certainly what I saw. Texas has all three timeouts, so they get it out into decent field position now. Dead ball. Personal foul, number 46 on the kicking team. Yep. It'll be a 15-yard penalty. First down. And as bad as things could have been for Texas, they have an opportunity now to get back three points because they're way out now on the 45-yard line and all three timeouts remaining. Chad Hubler committed that infraction. And that a costly one. The coaches got, will remind the uh, the young linebacker is Vince Young now. You got to wonder, Texas, I mean, they got a break there. Ohio State kicked the last two kickoffs into the end zone, and Jim Tressel on that one decided to pooch, and it backfired on him. Young hit on the release, complete cross midfield. Charles, the freshman running back, breaks the tackle, breaks free, and he's out of bounds, but inside the 20-yard line. So Charles, and we would expect to see him a lot. One thing that Mac Brown, a lot of coaches won't tolerate, fumbles. And of course, Selvin Young, their veteran running back, coughed it up. And now we'll see Charles. That's a 36-yard run, and what an escape. 
and plenty of time, no pressure on Vince. Take something off the throw and watch Charles accelerate on this play. Runs right through a tackle by Nate Sally. Well, when you run through Nate Sally, that is not gonna go well in that Ohio State locker room. Time running out here, quarterback draw. Vince Young searches daylight. And he's well short of that first down. Schlegel, the linebacker, 12 seconds, timeout. Been called right away. Look at the advantage. If you save your timeouts, you get an opportunity to score. Buckeyes defense must answer the call. The Texas defense did, but plenty of time to go here. You know, we ask uh, Mac about Young's maturity as a quarterback, and here's what the Texas coach said. When he first got here, he just wanted to throw and play, and he didn't want to study. And uh, when he started learning that this is pretty cool, and if, if you study them all the time and know where to go with the ball, you got a lot better chance. And it really excited him. Well, let's see here, Gary, if, uh, if he knows where to go with the football. They're inside the 15-yard line. They're down by six points. Only 12 seconds to go. They've got two timeouts, so certainly they can go toward the end zone here. I'd like to see him throw this ball into the end zone with Lima Swede, number four. He's their biggest receiver. Get him matched outside. Still have plenty of time to throw that ball up in the end zone and still have third and fourth down to have one more try and then kick the ball on fourth down. Pittman's in the game. He's had a big night. Thomas, number 16, an outstanding tight end. Charles, the freshman, stays in the game. Swedes at the bottom right there. Lynch Young steps up under center to look at the D. It's like three down linemen. Linebackers move to the gaps. And they've got him. And it was A.J. Hawk again. Number 47. Two turnovers and now a big sack with seven seconds to go and Texas uses a quick timeout. Watch Lima Sweet right here go inside of his defender. Vince Young is going to look for him and I think it confuses him. He thought he was going to go to the outside and run the fade. He goes inside. There's no one to throw the ball to on the play. He has to take a sack. Now the Longhorns have to decide what to do with seven seconds and they've taken Young out so they have sent Pino out right now. They don't want to waste the opportunity with seven seconds to go even though it's third down they're going to go ahead and take the points which would make it a three point game at the half. That and the other play that Mac has in the saddlebag I don't know that it would be a good time to run it. He does have a fake field goal that uh, they work on just like all teams do and here is a uh, here is A.J. Hawk. And, uh, that one coughed up, and he just yeah, picked he's it off. An interception, fumble recovery, and a sack, and then plenty of tackles. He's had a great first half, just as built. All-American A.J. Hawk. Now the holder for Mac is the backup quarterback, Matt Nordgren. And if they do go to the fake, it will be Nordgren up and throwing. But here just in a tight, tense ball game, 37-yarder, Pino. Getting set. Yeah, he hooked it a little bit. Ricochet got it. Oh my, a little, little pool cueing down there, huh? Comes back. He missed only one in warm-ups and he missed it to the left. We were standing there watching him. This one he hooked a little bit of left, but cued it inside and uh, I think that's huge that kickoff return the penalty and getting three points after you've had two turnovers like that getting back in this game. So we've had a uh, first half with at least 29 points here between Texas and uh, Ohio State their first meeting ever. Pretty much a, uh, a pick em game I guess the Buckeyes might have settled as Point favorite, depending on who you read and listen to, but uh, it, it was hard. Uh, it was hard for anybody who follows football to say that uh, they had a reason to pick a clear cup winner in this game, right. folks. This is pretty much what we expected. The more you talked about it, the more you could figure out which other team might win, no matter what you thought. I think the big story for Ohio State is the return of Troy Smith. Clearly, it gave them a, uh, a huge lift. 
McGee with the ball on the tee now. Santonio Holmes and Ted Ginn. Kicks it on the ground. Here's Ginn. 15 up the middle. And he's shy of the 25 yard line. And that's going to do it here in the first. We're told there's a flag down there, so just hang on. Right where the kickoff occurred. Comes the announcement. Offside. Kicking team. The tenor. They'll go to the locker line. room. Half time. So we've got a good one, folks. We've got the halftime gang coming on. A.J. Hawk was the player of the match. And let's go down to Jack with Mac Brown. Mac, how important was that last drive? I thought it was critical because we lost our momentum with the two turnovers. Our defense did a great job of hanging in there and making them come up with field goals. We got to force some turnovers and we got to protect the ball better the second half. But we get the ball to start the third quarter. Played a great first half other than the turnovers. So how important is it to get the ball early in that second half? Well, we, we get it to start the second half because yep. we kicked it off and it's key for us because we've got to get our momentum back and take the lead back in this game. They got a great team, great play. Place. Great game. Thanks, Mac. Thank you. Jack, thank you. It's 16 13. It's Ohio State leading Texas in the first meeting ever between two great schools. Now let's send you over to John and the gang. Brent, thanks a lot. Just as advertised, guys, as we expected. But Aaron, at the start of the night, you said Vince Young, to be great, didn't have to try to be great. Was he trying a little too hard, do you think, in the first half? Of course he was. Vince Young is guilty as charged. He was trying to do too much. Ohio State's defense will give you what they want to. They've already given 200 yards. Vince Young doesn't need to do anything else. He needs to settle down and relax and take what the Buckeyes are giving them. They're giving up yards. Ordinarily, big fella, I'd agree with you on that deal. Most players sometimes try to make too much by themselves. But in this situation here, Vince Young has to make plays. He is the guy for Texas. It's up to the Texas coaching staff to make moves and play calls that will give Young a chance to make the plays with his legs, not necessarily his arm. Troy Smith's done his job at Ohio State. They've figured it out over there. But I think Young has to make plays. He's their guy. And again, as Mac Brown said, that was a critical drive to get those final three points to make it a three-point game when we come back. We will look elsewhere in college football, including an upset of Michigan and Iowa. Welcome to the Valvoline Halftime Show. Vince Young in Texas scored the first 10 points of the game. Then they saw the Buckeyes reel off 16 in a row before a field goal of late 16-13. A great one going to halftime. John Saunders, Craig James, and Aaron Taylor. Normally here in Ohio Stadium, you don't see this type of atmosphere unless the Michigan Wolverines are in here. Well, today Michigan was at home to a very much improved Fighting Irish team from Notre Dame, trying to knock them off. Charlie White got the big victory against Pittsburgh, so they wouldn't be taken by surprise. Brady Quinn goes five yards. This is the opening drive to McKnight, seven to nothing. Brady Quinn wasn't done. Five yards this time to Jeff Samarja. 14 to 3 was the score. Now, Chad Henney, this is in the fourth quarter, guys, on the goal line. He mishandles the snap. He fumbles it. They actually went to replay before they ruled this one. Chad Henney, the young sophomore, playing like a sophomore today. This was the story of this game. Michigan was 0 for 3 in the red zone. They did not score when they had the opportunities. Chad Henney does get a man loose here, Mario Manningham. And it's a 17 to 10 game. Henney, again, this time is incomplete on second and ten now that looked like it could have been pass interference called it was not called guys but you can't say that decided the game there were a couple of calls that went to instant replay both went the way of Notre Dame but the Irish defensively just simply outplayed De Michigan defensively they were there but we've talked about Charlie Weiss he was the headliner going into this football game no doubt about it the way he prepares his team for games is one week at a time they're one week entities that way he avoids the highs and the lows of a long season and the focus this football team has had the first two weeks going on the road win like they have is outstanding I think Charlie 
Riley Weiss and, and getting the defense to match what he's got offensively in his head, man, the Irish, your old boys are doing pretty good. He did a great job bringing defensive coordinator Rick Minner in, guys. That's made a huge difference, and it's about attitude with this Irish team. They are playing possessed out there. And when you're watching this game, you saw them flying around, making tackles, two, three, four, five guys making plays. That's something we haven't seen out of Notre Dame. We knew that they had the offensive weapons to score, but it's defense, and that is about attitude. Charlie Weiss and that coaching staff has changed the attitude of the Irish. The LSU Tigers tonight would have been playing their second game of the regular season. Of course, their first game was postponed because of Hurricane Katrina. Tonight's game was supposed to be a home game against Arizona State. They've moved it to Arizona State. It still is LSU's home game and scoreless right now. And, and guys, there's got to be an awful lot of fly. It's got to be extremely difficult for the LSU players to play this game. It's almost as if the season has become a secondary issue for this team. This team right now is playing for their families and for their home state. It's going to be a long season, a new head coach, new coaching staff. It's going to be very difficult. I couldn't even imagine being a player and having to go on the road and do anything and play. But you know, football players were creatures of habit. They needed this game tonight. They needed to get back to some sort of normalcy, and you got to take your hats off them. They've been under so much that playing out there on the football field is a relief. Really? And to the credit of both schools, are raising a lot of money to help the evacuees as well. South Carolina facing Georgia. Now, Steve Spurrier almost never loses to Georgia, I think just once, as head coach of Florida. But he's not the head coach of Florida anymore. Thomas Brown, five yards on this touchdown run as Georgia would grab a 17-9 lead. But after a touchdown to make a 17-15, this is a two-point conversion attempt that falls short. Let me ask you the question, guys. Are we seeing the imprint already of Steve Spurrier on this South Carolina team? Because they shouldn't have been in this game. Well, what do you think? I think absolutely I we think have. you answered it right there. And you know what? The old ball coach was out there today, and he was rubbing off the forehead. You know, that old ball cap, God gum it. And he had all those smirks going out there, and just kind of rubbing his hat around. <laughs> but he is a smart guy. He was 11-1 against Georgia, coaching against that ball club. So he knows how to get ready to play the Bulldogs. Without, without question, DJ Shockley had a big game last, uh, last week. Didn't really show up today, made some mistakes. Is it that uh, South Carolina is so good, or maybe this Georgia team isn't as good as we thought? Steve Spurrier's old team, of course, the Florida Gators in action today against Louisiana Tech to get an easy win, 41-3. to Chris Lee, 13-22, 219 yards, two touchdowns passing, and two touchdowns running the ball as well. Florida State, remember the big win against Miami a week ago or so and they blow up the citadel 55 to 10 is now just starting the fourth quarter drew weatherford with two touchdown passes little guys this was close early yeah it was close early but you know what drew weatherford's got what it takes he's gonna be okay stick around when we come back we'll look at some of the earlier action from today around college football the valvoline halftime show Brought to you by Valvoline Max Life Motor Oil. Engineered to help extend the life of your car. Next Saturday right here on ABC. Join us at 3.30 Eastern Time. Some of you will see San Diego State face these Ohio State Buckeyes. Others will get picked. Look for their first win as they take on Nebraska. Number 18, Oklahoma got a win today. They'll face UCLA, or others will get Miami and Clemson. Check local listings for the game available in your area. That's next Saturday at 3.30 Eastern time. Time now for the no huddle highlights. We told you it was a very rough day for the Big Ten. Iowa in their big matchup against Iowa State. Drew Tate got knocked out of this game early, as did the mascot. And Jason Manson here throws an interception. He's picked off and is returned for a touchdown down by Mark and Zick. I think this was a case of the big headedness over at Iowa and Iowa State came in there and just slobber knocked them in this football game. They wanted the Cyhawk trophy. Virginia Tech against Duke. Virginia Tech got their win against NC State a week ago. Marcus Vick. A lot of people say he's like his brother, only maybe even with a little more touch on his pass. And he's showing that touch right here. What a beautiful ball. Timed perfectly. Just amount enough air for the receiver to run underneath it. Great pass by Vick. Josh Morgan with the reception there. Tulsa facing Oklahoma. Oklahoma coming off the loss of TCU. Adrian Peterson coming off a terrible game. Adrian Peterson made up for it today. We said somebody had to step up at Oklahoma and take over this football team. Adrian Peterson did it today when this football team was struggling. Red Bromar got the start 
Florida quarterback did not do a whole lot with it. And look at the manliness. That dude there was possessed. Don't you think they're still going to struggle, though, Oklahoma, yeah. if they yeah. don't get that quarterback position going? They've got to. You cannot afford to go out there and not be able to throw the football. We've said that before. This We're, is a tough position. No question. The Big 12 isn't what we just saw right there. It's a big time. Peterson is a, a back that was running determined today. He stepped up. They need the other members of that team to step up. He's a sophomore, but he's carrying the weight of the shoulders of the Sooner team right now. Somebody else needs to help him out. One position needs to step up, the quarterback. <laughs> And there's two guys in that position right now that could do that stepping up. When we come back, we will look ahead to the second half, the Buckeyes and the Longhorns. The Valvoline Halftime Show, brought to you by Valvoline Max Life Motor Oil, engineered to help extend the life of your car. There's a look at the ABT National Championship Trophy. Perhaps one of these teams behind us will be playing for that in the Rose Bowl. Of course, that's a long way off right now. Vince Young, at the beginning of this game, looked like he was going to be able to run wild. And hats off to Ohio State for being patient, down 10 to nothing. They made an adjustment. They saw that Young was doing extremely well with his legs, and it was when he would freeze and fake to the ball carry in the middle, and then Young would go out. Look at the red jerseys. They're not penetrating. They don't care about getting in the backfield right there. They're more concerned with blanketing the field, making sure they stay with Lane assignments now it's up to Vince Young to make a decision to get out of there he's got to use his legs a, a running young better than a flat-footed defense and if I was that offensive staff the Longhorn what I would do is I would get in there and try and run something off of that if those linebackers are frozen that's going to freeze the tight end up get David Thomas involved in this ball game all right if the first half is any indication strap yourselves in we're in for a great second half we've got a couple of running quarterbacks that are doing just that right now the Buckeyes with a three-point lead over Texas. You're watching college football on ABC Sports Championship Television. Well, here near the end of the halftime intermission, 16-13 Ohio State, and uh, Gary Danielson, something a little out of whack that started <laughs> very much in whack, if yeah, you will. Yeah, it sure did. It looked like Vince Young was going to put on one of those days where he went for 190-plus yards, like against Michigan. But the Ohio State linebackers, Brent, I think found their way, eventually judged that speed, and then the game kind of changed when those guys started to triangulate instead of just try to make single tackles. Yeah, I think the pressure that that defense suddenly yeah, exerted was uh, was huge as we get ready. Remember what Mac Brown told Jack Aroot as he was going off the field. What's important is we're going to have the football here to start the second half. So Houston with the ball on the tee and Brown and Taylor are back deep and Vince Young gets ready. Plenty of time. Obviously uh, Vince has been here before. Three point game, still anybody's ball game. They'll take it deep. And they'll take a knee coming out in the 20. And look who we found, folks. One of the one of the greatest Buckeyes of them all. Like Ohio State graduate uh, Jack Nicholas enjoying the game with uh, with his wife Barbara. Jack, your impressions of the uh, of the first half. And uh, no Ohio State <laughs> bias down there. I think uh, Vince Young uh, Got off to a great start, and Texas had a high state sitting back on their heels, and high state figured out him, figured him out a little bit, and got a couple of breaks, and back in the ball game, and now we've got a we've got a horse race here the second half. Stick right with us here, Jack. We're going to watch the first down here, and uh, see how Vince Young and the and the Longhorns do to start the second half. That inside handoff to start it, and they squeeze out about uh, three yards. Jack, I, when you told Gary, you're going up to the Wolverine game, you're going to see Michigan up at it, and he asked you, when's the last time you were in Ann Arbor? Tell us that story. Well, I was up there in 1956 when Hop Cassidy was, was playing, and High State went up there, and, and Manson and Kramer were captains for Michigan, and High State won 17 to nothing. Uh, and I haven't been in the Michigan Stadium since, but I'm going this year. Jack, it's always great to see you here. Enjoy the rest of the game. Okay, Brent. Nice That's a good one, Jack. Okay, Brent. Jack Nicholas, folks. Greatest golfer of all time. Deflected. Diving Sally's got it. Intercepted. 35-yard line. Buckeye football on the deflection. Nate Sally. Bobby Carpenter. 
Carpenter makes the play. Number 42, watch Bobby Carpenter get in front of the throw, should pick it off, it goes through his hands, and Nate Sally gets the tip on the play. The linebackers for Ohio State are making the plays in this football game. He reads, he reacts, he doesn't catch it, but he makes the interception. Great job by Bobby Carpenter. Best trio of linebackers in college football. That's not my opinion. That's the consensus of, of the scouts and the folks. And Vince Young is on the headset talking to Davis. And now, Troy Smith, which is tight end in motion like an H-back. Hands off to Pittman. Pittman around the right side to the 31-yard line and Michael Griffin up to make the stop. And uh, now it's time for the Pacific Life game summary here, Gary. I'll tell you what, you come from behind like they did, but look at this. Texas is averaging 6.1 yards per carry per play in this game, and they're losing at halftime. That's what turnovers will do to you. Smith comes up underneath center. Second down and short. Reaches for the handoff. First down. Pittman. And we check in down below, Jack, what the coaches have to say. Well, Brent, actually, Jim Trestle challenged his defense to do exactly what they did on that series. He brought up a couple of mistakes that they made. He said offensively he is going to stay with Troy Smith. When I asked about the condition of Justin Zwick, he said, I may throw him in, may throw him in for a change of pace. An update on the Longhorns injury list. They're starting to running back. Selvin Young out for the rest of the game. He's reactivated that ankle. All right, Jack. And here on the first down play for the Buckeyes. One on one down here on Santonio San Holmes. One on one. And Smith with that option pitch to Pittman. And he is upended by Terrell Brown, one of the young corners. Really like the option play on this thing. You come down the line of scrimmage, and the most important thing on the, is to pitch the ball forward. Get him outside, and he's outside with the pitch. Look at that distribution. Here's the pitch man. He pitches it out like that. That is perfect distribution on the play. Robinson, shaken up, is off the field. Arakpo, Brian Arakpo, playing for the Longhorns. Second down and eight. Four down linemen. And now a backer moves up tight. Almost intercepted again. And dropping back was Roderick Wright, the All-American. You know, his uh, uncle, some of you folks remember, was Elmo Wright. Played with Houston and the Kansas City Chiefs. And Roderick uh, someday will be another member of that family to play. Watch him drop back and just bat it down. I think that should be illegal. <laughs> Defensive tackles dropping back, knocking down passes when you weigh <laughs> 320 pounds. What is this game coming to? Yeah, they can move, they folks. They sure can. Those big old rascals down there. I'm surprised that Ohio State hasn't tried to get the ball to Ted Ginn. I mean, he can get the ball in his hands. He's dropped a couple, but they have not concentrated on it. Now Troy Smith drops it, and it will be fourth down, and another opportunity about to go awry. And that means John Houston will trot onto the field here to attempt another field goal. You know, there's one thing driving the ball all the way down to the 20-yard line if you're successful on offense and kicking a field goal. That kind of demoralizes the other team. But there's another thing being the beneficiary of a turnover and not be able to score touchdowns. That helps Texas. And right now, that's the third straight time Ohio State has not been able to get the ball in the end zone. And let's see if they can get another field goal the last two times they did. 44-yarder. He's perfect on the night. A lot of people speculated that Trestle would miss Nugent. And Nugent was one of the best we've seen. But so far tonight, John Houston has been right on the money, and it's 19-13. Ben Young is coming to bat again. One of the great traditions in college football, dotting the eye. Zach Roberts did it. And 100,000 plus in Columbus, Ohio, exploded. And after being down by 10 points, the Buckeyes now lead it again by 6 19 13 Josh Houston with the ball on the tee I apologize if I said John back there 
It is Josh who is perfect to it. And he drills one. Oh, my. That's a big time leg right Holy there. Well, cow. some would say down Austin Way, my friends down there would say Vince has got him just where he wants him here. Gary. He sure does. In the last seven wins by Texas, six of them have been come from behind. If they're going to get number eight, it's going to be seven out of eight, obviously. But Texas has turned it over three times in their last four possessions. How big is that right now for Vince Young and the Horns? He's having trouble solving this trio of linebackers and they have adjusted continually you watch those backers come up back back out base four three taking it Hawk. Hawks got him again short of the first down and uh, Jack uh, how about our guy Vince Young we well, are talking about the way he likes to come from behind all he has to do is look to his wrist and he says he wears a white wristband that provides him for that inspiration it simply says heart he told me yesterday he put it on this summer and said the key is when you have things that aren't going your way you've got to show heart. That's what he's got right now and that's what he's going to have to exhibit Brent. Yeah that's what he's shown all along isn't it Jack as a as an athlete and that's something that no scout can ever measure when they go out to look at these youngsters. Gives it to his young running back slips through for the first down. This young man looks like he's got an upside this number 25 Charles. Yeah that's the guy that said Texas fans I'm going to make you forget Adrian Peterson when I get over there at Texas because that's the type of back I am. Well I don't think they're going to forget Adrian Peterson but Whoa. they got a good one in him but that's yeah. the guy that said I'm that good. Well <laughs> some of these fellows got a pretty good size <laughs> ego but if you're going to talk you got to walk right. First down and ten. Pulls out. And the Bucks weren't fooled, but he shakes Schlego, completes it, and loose now. To the four-yard line, Billy Pittman, who has been his number one target here tonight. And it'll be first and goal for Young and the Horns. 63 yards. And watch the linebacker has a clean shot at him and doesn't bring him down. They cross the linebackers inside and miss Vince Young. What do we say? When you get a shot at Vince Young, you got to tackle him. Schlegel misses him, finds him off, throws the ball. When you miss a sack like that, that's one that could have been a 10-yard loss. Turns around the other way, first and goal from the five. Opportunity for the Horns. Charles is right to Young's right. Movement by the right side of the line. You can see number 63, Blaylock, pulled up. Costly five yards when you get down there in that red zone. Part of the snap, false start. Number 63, offense. It'll be a five yard penalty and remain first down. brought just outside well it's probably nudging the 10 yard line down there so the horns Mac Brown have got 10 yards now to make that touchdown trailing it by six the crowd is unbelievable in here tonight rolling left looking for a hole on a cutback and the Buckeyes stayed in their lanes that was superb defense that time by Ohio State Pitcock, Schlegel, they filled it up, and you could see them as they moved in unison with the quarterback. Absolutely. Nobody jumped out of the lane. They protected against the cutback. And the thing that Bobby Carpenter did is he went across that formation and never turned his shoulders. He just shuffled across. Watch Carpenter right there just come across, and he just keeps his shoulders square. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Guy gets his feet, turns it back in, and Schlegel makes the stop. Yeah, Schlegel did a great job of unloading on him right there in the middle after missing him. Just a moment ago on that 63 yarder. Now second down and goal. Young again to the four yard line and A.J. Hawk. You know, one of the things Vince is going to find out in a game like this, playing linebackers like this that are pounding away at you, that'll take its toll by the time you get to the fourth quarter. Sure will. And you know what? It looks like the Ohio State linebackers right now. 
are playing the quarterback and not the running back. They're expecting the fake every time. So let's see if Texas read that and tries to slip Charles through on third down and goal. He's got Taylor and Charles in there. Ball at the five. Now they send Taylor out to the right. Young again, and the Bucks were ready. Carpenter from behind. Ohio State linebackers have been monsters. They're big. They're not those small, fast guys, but they run fast enough. I think this was going to be a pitch for a reverse to Taylor, but Vince Young did not feel comfortable and never pitched the ball. It would not shock me come next spring if Carpenter and Hawk don't go in the first round of the NFL draft. We'll see how they measure up. Brent, you know, I counted through. I counted 10 players, legitimate first-round draft picks in this game on the two teams. 25-yard field goal for Pino here. This could make it a three-point game again on the money. So both field goal kickers have risen to the occasion here in a pressure-packed game. 35 points on the board. 7.36 left in quarter number three. A field goal separates two great schools. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Chevy, the new Chevrolet's American Revolution. Pacific Life for insurance, annuities, and investments. Choose Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. FedEx for the ultimate of reliable shipping. Relax, it's FedEx. And Budweiser, the bright color and crisp, clean taste you'll only find in the King of Beers. Anthony Gonzalez will go back as a return man along with Ted Ginn. So Gonzalez back deep for the first time. And here comes the speedster. 15 looking down. Looking to get by him, and he was slowed up, and McGee, the kicker, pounces on him. But number seven, Michael Huff, slowed him up. A 46-yard return. Gary, are you surprised that they said here? I, I'm shows what shocked. You can do. I'm shocked. They had Gonzalez on the field, and they kicked it long to Ted Ginn. I, I, you know, if you're going to kick it long, you got to kick it on the left side of the field. You're just daring this guy to break one. And this, if Michael Huff doesn't make the tackle here, this is out the door for a touchdown. He actually run into his own guy, or it would have been a touchdown. I don't understand that. And Justin Zwick returns. Number 12, giving the Buckeyes a change of pace here. Up by three. Zwick comes in, hand off. Here comes Pittman. First down run before Michael Griffin again can bring him down. It's an 18-yard run. Well, I said Ohio State had to win Woody Ball, and that was Woody Ball right there. Two tight ends, take the snap, block him outside, and Pittman, he looks like a new guy. You know, and we asked the coaches about him, and the coaches said in a word from last year to this year, he's matured. You can see the type of talent he has because he exploded through that hole. First down and 10. Pittman is stoned. And uh, Jack, uh, that was uh, an impressive ceremony at uh, halftime, my friend. And one that needed to be done as Woody Hayes joined the Heisman Trophy winners in the Ring of Honor here with the big O that Woody used to wear and his name now posted, and we're going to explain to you after this play, the single man that single-handedly ended what was one of, I thought, the glaring errors in the history of Ohio State. Yeah, Jack, I totally agree with you. And, uh, we'll come right back to you now. There's Ted Ginn right there. They need to bubble screen one of these two up. Swick checked him out. Now he throws San Antonio. No, check that right now. Roy Hall makes that catch down the sideline, and Zwick and the Buckeyes are driving. Let's send it back to Jack. Here it is. One, one, one more play here. Zwick feels the pressure, does a nice job. He's a thrower. You don't have to scramble. One-on-one, -on -one, put it up. Ohio State's biggest receiver, Roy Hall, goes up and grabs that one. Nice patience by Justin Zwick. 
Yeah, I'm glad we saw that replay, and uh, Jack will continue the story here about Woody. We're deep in the red zone now. We're inside the 15-yard line. Zwick will try to finish what he started here. Roy Hall's at tight end right there. Here comes Pittman. Fumble! And recovered by Texas. They're calling it down on the field, though, Oh, Brent. the line judge said he's down. Yes, he calling. had a good view of it. And when they call it down, the whistle goal goes, and it is not a reviewable call. If it was whistled down, if that was the key to it, and yes. we've got an injured Buckeye, we've got an injury timeout on the field. Pittman slammed his knee, and that's what it looks like he's holding. Take a look at this, uh, Gary. Comes outside. Let's see. Got the ball in his left hand. Comes down. Just as he's hitting his butt, the referee, you watch him. Down, down, down with the linesman right there. Yeah, I think the knee was down, and that's yep. what he said. Okay. Yep. Let's go back down uh, now, Jack. We've got an injury timeout, and you uh, fill us in on this great story. Well, I'm standing next to the new athletic director at Ohio State University, Gene Smith. And, Gene, you single-handedly righted what I thought was a long time wrong. When you walked into the stadium, what was missing? Well, I was just surprised when I took the tour and didn't see Woody Hayes' name uh, in the stadium at all, and I just felt he needed to be recognized. Well, thanks so much for writing that. I know we've got a big play coming up here. This is all the game that you thought it was going to be, isn't it? Oh, yeah, this is special. I know television's happy, and I'm happy. We're ahead, and we're moving the ball into the end zone now. Will we see more games like this in the future, or is oh, this definitely. a one-of-a-kind? Oh, definitely. This is all about what it's all about. This is what the kids want to play. All right, let's watch. All right, Jack, thank you. And Schnitker checks in as the running back. He throws the block, switch, got an open man, and didn't get to the tight end that time. Had to throw it out of the back of the end zone. He didn't want to risk it. That was Ryan Hamby. And uh, you can see down is Michael Griffin for the Longhorns there out of the back of the end zone. That was a nice play by Justin Zwick that time. It was not open. He threw it to the back of the end zone. Either Hamby was going to get it or no one was going to get it. Can Texas hold on again? How many times has Ohio State been inside the 20 and only one touchdown in the game? They're down in five. Schnitker out to the right. Swick bobbled. Touch no. no. Couldn't hang on. Oh Hamby had a sure touchdown juggled it then it looked like he was going to get it and Cedric Griffin delivered the wallop and saved the touchdown what a read and throw by Zwick he gets his feet ready puts it right on the numbers misses it juggles it thinks he's going to get it and then right there coming from the wide side Cedric Griffin Griffin puts the hit on him and saves the day oh man was that quick feet by Justin Zwick on that one that's why he was accurate Here's Josh Houston again, 26 yarder. Got it again. 22 16 as Houston nails another field goal. But the Buckeyes let a sure touchdown escape not once, but twice. What a hit. Timeout. You're watching the BCS Spotlight game presented by ADT. Our score right now, 22 to 16. 38 points on the board. 5-12 to go in the third quarter. Brent, I didn't know if this game could live up to the building. I think it's better than I thought it was going to be. I agree. Ball on the tee for Houston. Brown is the return man at the two-yard line for the Horns. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. At the 18-yard line, and we check in with Sam Ryan in New York. Sam? Well, Brent, the Sun Devil Stadium, this one a home game for LSU. Jamarcus Russell runs around the outside, fires at 28 yards to Benny Brazil to the one-yard line. Then Joseph Adai will take it in. Evens the score at 7 with ASU in the second quarter. That's where we are now. We're going to send it back out to you now, Brent. Well, he had a personal foul on both sides on that play. That's a good call. Good job right there by the official. Guys are a little bit jacked up, pushing each other. Let's not change yardage because somebody's yelling at each other. Here's Vince Young. 
Watch this hit right here. Big time hit. Ben Chum and the horns down in the noisy end. And folks, when I say noisy tonight, I mean it. Got it off in time. Pulled it out. Came back to the freshman running back. Charles, the receiver. And uh, Gary, what about our star watch here tonight? Could be a bunch of different guys, but let's settle on A.J. Hawk. This guy was billed as one of the best linebackers, an All-American linebacker, and he has lived up to it. Eight tackles, an interception, a sack, a fumble recovery, but the whole linebacking crew for Brent, I mean, for Ohio State, 22 tackles in this game. An interception, a sack, and Bobby Carpenter caused the interception with a pass deflection. And that's our IBM star watch here tonight. Second down and five, 428. Vince Young working against those linebackers does not get a first down. And you can see the, the red shirts, Hawk and the gang collapse on him. Nate Sally, who's been very active. A.J. Hawk read this play instantly. Watch him bounce into the hole, take on the blocker. Nowhere for Vince Young to go. No space. When you want to stop a guy like that, you close down space, and Hawk took that play on and did it. Second-ranked Texas and fourth-ranked Ohio State. The winner of this game figures to be number two next week behind USC. It's 22-16. The Buckeyes once trailed at 10-0. They've outscored Texas 22-6 since then. Third down and two. And a whistle. I don't even know how they can hear it down there. Second time legal procedure penalty down on the goal line and now here for Texas. Texas players are going to talk about the uh, the noise down there and trying to hear what's going on. It's been unbelievable. The bell tolls in Columbus. And again, as I pointed out, they're down in that closed end of the stadium. That noise stays there and just cascades down on you. It's as tough a home field environment as exists in college football. His target Thomas wide open boy that's the best hands on the football team I went out and practice and saw him catch one hander after one hander and he drops a huge one right there at the end of the game we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team and Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund Richmond McGee trots on to the field and too deep Holmes and Ginn is to the putter's right. Number four is Holmes. And it's almost like they're challenging Ginsaddle. That one went out of bounds. They did not give him a crack at it. And uh, let's see where they spot that ball. Buckeyes are indicating that it uh, went out of bounds. Great field position again for the Buckeyes. Great views being provided by the Outback Steakhouse airship to Bloomin' Onion. Captain Tom Wooden is high above up there. Looking down on this uh, great scene here on a beautiful Saturday night. Zwick stays in the game. Well, that Troy Smith had three chances to put a touchdown on the board inside the 20. Couldn't do it. They go back to Justin. Swick is under fire as Tim Crowder rolls in for his second sack of the night. That was a bust by the Ohio State offensive line. Crowder's a defensive end. No one turned out to block him that time. He's not a linebacker, not a safety. That's just a bust. That's not a misread or anything. Ohio State turned him loose, the offensive line. Gonzalez brings the play in from Trussell's sideline. Roy Hall and Gonzalez go out to the right. Zwick 
couldn't find anybody, so he'll hook it. Steps out of bounds near midfield. The two quarterbacks both said they would play. Troy Smith lit a fire under them. Got him some field goals, but Zwick should have had a touchdown pass the last time. Both look like they can move the offense. You can see why both of them have been able to play. Troy Smith's touchdown pass to Santonio San Holmes in the first half. There's Troy going over some plays on the sideline. Third and three for the Buckeyes. through Santonio Holmes Brown was the defensive back who was sticking right with Santonio Holmes as they probed the deep ball it is now fourth down and three that was the same formation and same coverage only the opposite way when you talked about the touchdown pass to Troy Smith hit the Santonio they had the same play now throwing it to the right and this time the ball wasn't thrown perfectly incomplete pass from Paso back to punt again for the Bucks. Ross is standing on the Texas 10 low snap scoops it up. This one inside the five. A beautiful punt by Trapasso. The kicking game for Ohio State has been spectacular here tonight. And let us check in with Sam Ryan in New York. All righty, Brent, could this be the singular player of the week? Oklahoma's Adrian Peterson, 63 yards last week, comes through today against Tulsa. 32 carries, 220 yards, three touchdowns. Sooner struggle, but they won text vote to 87654 in your singular phone for your ballot and a chance to win a trip to the national championship, Brent. And uh, Sam, that national championship game will be in the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. The battle cry for these horns. Let's go back to the Rose Bowl. For the Buckeyes, let's get there. Four down linemen for Ohio State. The closed in as noisy as it's ever been. And the freshman without much daylight. Trudlow. And of course, a reminder coming up after the game, we'll have the thrifty post game report with John and the gang. We're right here. Brent, we talked about the linebackers a lot. But that defensive line, the front four for Ohio State, Pitcock, Green, Patterson, and Kudla, they have forced it up, too. That's a good Texas offensive line, and they have not been mashed. And Richardson is now in at one of the defensive end spots on second down and seven. They put three down linemen on this obvious passing situation, trying to get to Vince on the move, incomplete. The one thing that has not happened here for Vince Young, no one has really taken over as a go-to receiver for him. Vince usually scrambles to his right when he feels pressure. Gets pressure inside, nothing there, doesn't see anybody. He's got the tight end again, David Thomas. Flicks it out there. Thomas runs it, runs it, tries to stick out one hand and doesn't come up with it. The co-defensive coordinator of this team is Luke Fickle, and he works hands-on with the linebackers. And the young man, first big job, and he's doing a fabulous job here along with Jimmy Haycock, who works with the line down on the field. The young sets the screen, and it was blown up right away by Tyler Everett, the senior corner. This is his ninth start, and Tyler Everett, he smelled that play out and blew it up. This screen pass was called right into the teeth of the blitz. Reads it, throws it, Dante Whitner feels it and forces it high and it up. Tyler Everett, playing safety a year ago, moves over to corner this year, comes up with a great tack. The most underrated unit on this Ohio State team, this defensive backfield. This is one of the best secondaries in the country. And they are showing it here tonight against Vince Young and the Horns. McGee. Great field position again for Ohio State. Wow. Working with half the field. Up 
by six points. Remember what we told you in the first half. In games decided by six points or less, Mac Brown is 14 and six at Texas. Jim Trussell at Ohio State, 10 wins and only three losses. The man has been superb in tight football games. Sometimes a guy that doesn't make the tackle is helped by somebody else. This time to the outside, Dante Whitner's on a blitz, but he reads the screen, stops, and makes the play. That's what coaches call playing with instincts. Dante Whitner's on a play, senses it out, turns around, and makes it. Troy Smith play. returns as quarterback for Ohio State. Pittman. Struggling, trying to get to the 50-yard line. Aaron Harris, been active in that middle linebacking spot. It has been a night for defensive players to shine here. A.J. Hawk, the ringleader of the linebacker, Schlegel and Carpenter have been chipping in. End of the third quarter, 22-16. The time and the day is right. The revolution will begin this Saturday night. Well, we get ready now to start the money quarter. It is 22-16 Ohio State with the lead. And Troy Smith with a second down and 10 here. In that old familiar power eye formation. Ginn comes through in motion. Going to do the end around with Ginn. Skips. Nothing doing. Slips free. Hangs onto the football as he goes down. Well, uh, what surprises you about the night here, Gary? Really nothing. You know, I, I thought Ohio State would, linebackers would be able to match up pretty well. I thought Vince Young was a great football player. I thought Texas might struggle a bit at wide receiver. I mean, everybody's played about as advertised. Been a great football game. Yes, it has indeed. And, uh, you know, you would hope that we'd have more games like yep. this. The problem is that it's so tough for these big schools when they lose a game to battle their way back into the BCS territory. That's preventing some of the early season matchups. There will be a rematch in Austin next year of these two. There's Troy dancing across midfield, but uh, didn't get a first down on it. As Arakpo, Brian Arakpo, number 98, there for the Horns. Fourth down and seven, so the Horns figure to get it back here early in the fourth quarter. Thought Jim Trestle there played a little bit of uh, ball position, field position game right there. Third and long, he didn't want to make a big mistake. His defense is playing well. He said, let's punt it down there, see if they can go all the way on us. There's no way he was going to scramble, I mean, run a quarterback draw for a first down there. Chapasso punt it again. Low picks it up, got a good pair of hands. And a fair catch at the uh, 10 yard line. Well, Vince Young, let's take a little bit of a closer look at the Texas star. My favorite TV show is Martin Lawrence because he's crazy. My favorite place to eat in Texas is Papa Do's Seafood. I love seafood. My favorite movie is Gladiator because it gets me pumped up for the game. When he hears that noise out there, he's thinking that maybe some of the lions are around. Well, he got to be a gladiator now. If uh, if they asked the crowd, they'd all go thumbs down. They would want him to go for the kill, Ohio State. <laughs> but I don't know if they're going to get him. He's all alone back there. He's got wideouts galore. Texas is going to start to put it up. Incomplete and a big hit that time. That was Whitner again. It looked like I, I couldn't tell exactly, but it looked to me, I was watching it with my eyes up here, that he bobbled the snap a little bit, and that's why he was late with the slit snap. I don't know if he ever had a good grip on the ball. Shotgun snap, let's see if he does. Yes, he did bobble it just a little bit. He threw it under Kudla on that play. Was that something? <laughs> He 
A.J. Hawk walks out on a wide out. It's Taylor. He was coming in to clean up. A.J. Hawk joined Whitner. One of the beauties of having a uh, linebacker like A.J. Hawk is you can walk him out on some of those receivers. He moves so well. A.J. Hawk, smart football player, tough football player. He reads things extremely well, runs right through those blocks. And Dante Whitner has had a tremendous football game. Two excellent safeties. Listen to this crowd. Third and 12. is the wide receiver on that side. Vince took a licking and threw for the first down a big time play by pitcher and catcher, 13 yards. Mike Kudlow that time got Vince Young just as he let that ball go. One on one coverage to the outside. Ohio State was spying inside with A.J. Hawk. Nice route, ball is thrown right on the sideline. And Brent, after Kudla hit him, just take a look at Brian Carter right there. He got up, smacked Kudla on the helmet, and said, nice try. Being an accounting major means he'll get a job for sure when he leaves school. 12, 12 to go. First down and 10. Vince Young throwing downfield, got an open man. And he has put it right in Billy Pittman's hands. Pittman has been his leading receiver here tonight, and he has found him again. 27 more yards for Pittman. Young has thrown for 229 yards here tonight. Anybody doubting that this guy's just a runner now? He throws the ball wonderfully. He does not have to overstride. He's got great vision, and he's only going to get better and better and better as he throws more and more balls. He's a future superstar in any level. It's almost as though Mack and the coaches have said, all right, Vince, let's go to work with the arm. They've tightened up on the legs. Let's see what we can do through the air here. End around, bad pitch by the freshman. Does he get on it? A dangerous play call when you've got a freshman running back like Jamal Charles making the second pitch here. I watched practice Tuesday. The same thing happened. Dante Whitner was right in the middle of that play with a strong side blitz, and the same thing happened in practice. They fumbled the ball in the reverse on the same play. You hate to take the ball out of Vince Young's hands, either running or throwing. When you do something like that, he's your best asset. He's your golden boy. Second down and 22 he faces now. That snap. Picks it up. Steps away from trouble. Hawk is there. Hawk is bringing him down. This kid is some football sure player. Sure is. Gentlemen. He's a bigger, faster Chris Spielman. And watch on this blitz. They cross blitz again. In comes Hawk. He comes out. He senses the blitz. Now watch him try to wrap around and hit the ball. He tries to swing around and hit that ball. A.J. Hawk, what a game. Ten tackles and two sacks for number 47. Unbelievable football player. In high school, he was also a punter. And he averaged better than 40 yards a punt. Third and 23. Three down linemen. Vince Young looking for an open man. Hawks closing in. Carpenter's right there. 47 and 42. We're shutting the window of opportunity. And it is fourth and 23. You have to have linebackers to run like this to be able to stop Vince Young. If you don't have them, you don't have a chance. 47 right there. Watch him. He's the spy. He sees it and he runs. Watch him run. Here comes Bobby Carpenter up. He cleans it up. Even if it was a completed pass, it would have been short of the first down. McGee hunting again. Fair catch. And uh, there's a balls on the ground. I thought they interfered with Ted Ginn. Signaling the fair catch running up, but it might have been his own man caused it. They might have been working on the gunners. 
jammed it so hard the crowd thinks that they interfered with Ginn and that the penalty should have been called. But we have the advantage of taking a look and replay here. Ginn was coming up. This is old man. Yep, he Tyler. ran into he ran into Everett over there. That was and Everett saves the day if it touched him. Ohio State football. We've got a timeout. This headline in a recent edition of USA Today tells it all about Ohio State's linebackers. They were eager. They've been eager. Look at their hair, Brent. They made a pact amongst themselves. Neither of the three have been to a barber since last year. They said they're not going to cut it till they win a national championship. <laughs> you bring on by then. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at those stats. I'll tell you. A tremendous by the three linebackers. They've had help up front, but they've been the story. Justin Zwick returns as the Buckeye quarterback. Pittman, the ball carrier. Now, Santonio Holmes has the Buckeye touchdown catch, and uh, we asked him about being productive in this Ohio State system. The coaches look for me to, you know, be a leader, um, and that's pretty much my role. Uh, no matter who comes in and takes over the spotlight, you know, let those guys handle that, you know, and keep, you know, doing what you've been doing, uh, being productive for the team. And he has indeed been productive. San Antonio Holmes out of South Florida came up here to Columbus and has enjoyed it tremendously. And he too has a big time football future. Swick looks right, comes back to the left now. Gonna fire. And San Antonio's got it. On cue at midfield, first down. At 17 yards, Zwick to San Antonio Holmes. Justin Zwick thought Teddy Kinn was going to run an out right here. Watch him as he gets his feet ready to throw an out route. It isn't there. He just goes long. So he has to switch to the other side. He goes all the way across the field. Three guys coming in on him as he gets hit, and he finds San Antonio Holmes. What a play by Justin Zwick. A lot of quarterbacks don't look one way and throw the other. We saw some of that earlier today. Quarterbacks look at exactly where they were going to throw it every time. Now it's Pittman steps away. Got a chance here for a game. Just short of the first down. Cedric Griffin, who has been all over the place for that Longhorn defense, starting his 32nd game up to make the first down saving tackle. And Pittman looks like he's just a little slow going back to that huddle. And uh, we'll see if the coaches. They send Stan White Jr. in as the uh, as the fullback. There's Pittman trying to shake it off now. He's right behind White. He couldn't get the first down. When the coaches see that, they'll wish they took him out and put Absolutely. another runner in. No Absolutely. question. Absolutely. Texas was completely confused because Ohio State had unbalanced their line. Now they're going to have to take him out. Yep, he was limping badly, and that cost him an opportunity for a first down because there was a cutback there. You know, that's something that young football players uh, have to learn. Many times in college, we see youngsters stay out there. In the NFL, when those fellas feel that, man, they're getting off right now because uh, a fresh a fresh body is always better out there. Third down and one. Schnitker's in there. Wick straight ahead behind Mangold for the first down. So the center, Nick Mangold, 6'4", 290-pound senior, leads the way. We are live at the top of the hour from the horseshoe. You look down on that scene, and this is our Pacific Life game summary. Texas broke to a 10-0 lead. But the Buckeyes regrouped. Troy Smith struck Antonio Holmes for a touchdown. A field goal, and we were deadlocked to 10. Then A.J. Hawk and the linebackers went to work on Vince Young. We've got a timeout, and we'll take a break. 7.27 over on the board. Ohio State leads Texas, but only by six. College football on ABC Sports is brought to you by Singular, Raising the Bar, Allstate. Are you in good hands? 
Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottle. Dr. Pepper, one taste, and you get it. Lowe's, where you'll find all your home improvement needs. Lowe's, where improving home improvement never ends. First down and 10 for the Buckeyes. Zwick still the quarterback. Ball just across the Longhorn 40-yard line. Ohio State leading to 22-16. Zwick in a foot race, wants to set it. Gets it into the tight end's hands, and this time, Hamby hangs on with Aaron Ross defending. You can see right there, the difference in starting position in this game has allowed Ohio State. They have not been able to score touchdowns, but they've controlled the game with these turnovers and field position. Our record crowd here in the horseshoe, 105,500. 65. Here's second down and six. Switch spreads the field. Gonzalez came over to the right. Under pressure. Ken grabs it. Stepped out of bounds. Very close to the first down marker. Ken looks back. He thought he had it, but he uh, did. Yes, he did. You're right back now and the officials are going to uh, are going to take a closer look at this ball Boy, where uh, he stepped out over there. Justin Zwick throws a nice ball. This one is right on the hands. When in doubt in a tight ball game you got to dive forward and stretch that ball out. Looks like he Very got it. Close. Looks like he got it. Yep. Let's check in with Jack. So Brent, Justin Zwick, many people thought when Troy Smith won that Michigan game, might have been relegated to the bench. His quarterback coach, Joe Daniels, thought he might transfer. In fact, Joe called him in the office and said, look, I'll help you to transfer if you think that's what you want. Justin told his coach, said, no, I'm really happy with what I'm doing. I got my friends here at Ohio State. I want to enjoy it. If it means sharing quarterback chores, so be it. And he's doing just that here tonight. Jack with a uh, first down. Zwick on the field. And they're banging Pittman behind the right side of that line. Mabado and Michael Huff. And again, a reminder, regional coverage next week. The Hurricanes attempting to regroup, and they'll take on a Clemson team that has had a couple of big victories. San Diego State will come in here to Columbus and play these Buckeyes. Second down and... Uh, 10 yards. Got to be thinking, what is Jim Trussell thinking? One more field goal puts it more than an eight-point game. His kicker has been perfect. He's controlling it. He loves to play the kicking game. Got to hurry. <laughs> Deflected, but right to Pittman. Gee, oh, my, oh, my. A completed pass, and Robison, the big fella, just knocked it right to the running back. 40-inch vertical jump. This guy's been using it to do. Number 39 right there. And man on the line of scrimmage. Nobody blocks him. Pittman is supposed to block him. He goes up. He reads it. He had the tight end wide open to Justin Zwick. And Pittman, you have on a short pass play if you're a running back. You have to attack the end man on the line of scrimmage just for that reason. And Pittman didn't do it. If they're playing field position for the field goal, they'll throw in underneath and get as much as they can and send Houston out. They won't worry about the 14. Swift deflected incomplete. Here comes Houston, and this will be a long one. Yeah, lose, you, losing yardage on that play. I was uh, that was a huge play by Brian Robinson that time, knocking down that play because that took him out of field goal range, almost. A 50-yard attempt for Josh Houston. He's been perfect so far tonight. 50-yarder on its way. So it stays at 22-16. Now it's...
It's Vince Young's turn. Can he lead still another comeback in the teeth of this record crowd in Columbus, Ohio? But Josh Houston just missed a record six field goal for the Buckeyes. Mike Nugent hit five at North Carolina State. Bob Atha back in the 80s had five. And now Vince Young coming out from the 33-yard line. Takes the inside handoff, fires, diving incomplete, but there is a penalty flag thrown. There is a penalty flag, Tyler Everett with coverage on the play. You're allowed in college to jam a guy downfield, but not while the ball is in the air. Everett got a piece, and that ball was being thrown at the same time. That's the way I looked at it up here, at least. Pass interference, defense, it'll be a 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Let's see how much of a piece we got on, um, of him on this one. Tyler Everett coming down, balls in the air on the stutter right now, and he grabs him. That's penalty. That stutter play, perfect call on first down that time by Greg Davis. That was a nice call. Young and the horns are near midfield. Crosses midfield. And out of bounds. Schlegel, the linebacker, forcing him out on that far side. Well, the peak antifreeze in the race is tomorrow. Jack of Rudeby taking off. Help out on that coverage. 130 Eastern right here on ABC. Danica Patrick had been running real well up there. We'll see how that turns out. 22 16 447 second down and six. They're coming and young had one on one throws incomplete. Uh, Taylor broke it off at about yep. the 25 yard line but there was heavy pressure on the Texas quarterback. That time from the short side of the field Ohio State brought the blitz. They started playing man to man coverage and Taylor uh, a converted running back did not read that play, and Vince Young just had to throw it away. Here's third down and six. Clock inside, five minutes. Timeout has been called. The Longhorns will use their first here in the second half. Mack and the Horns offense will talk it over. We'll be right back. This is a tribute to the Ohio State linebackers. In that first drive, Vince Young ate up 52 yards. Since then, 14 rushes for only 17 yards. And they have repeatedly put on pressure. The defensive tackles have been twisting. The linebackers have been jumping in and out and moving around from position to position. Young has not been able to determine where they're always going to be. First down as he hits the freshman coming out of the backfield. And Charles, stumbling his way, has got it for the Longhorns. And Vince Young, the comeback kid, could be mounting another one here. Yeah, so Vince has been forced out of his running game, but he's answered in the passing game. He has almost 240 yards throwing the ball against his Buckeye defense. And you may stop him in the run, but he's answered tonight that he can throw the ball when necessary. The slot is off to Vince's right. The Buckeyes were coming, and Young tried to get outside. And a brilliant play by Whitner. Whitner was coming up and showed blitz, had a blocker on him, was able to get around and take Young down, who is slow getting up right now. Remember what we said at the top of this broadcast. The number of hits. Take a look at that jersey. Look at the punishment that he has received here tonight. I wonder if he fell on the ball here or what. Whitner gets him low, and who gets him high? Is it Carpenter gets him high? Watch Whitner take him low. Carpenter cleans it up. 
forces him down and gets him right on the back that time. I don't know if it's back or what or left shoulder, but he got Bobby Carpenter never gave up on the play and got that extra hit. And that's exactly so Matt the Northman's punishment. going to have to come in the game. The training staff is on the field, I believe, unless we had a timeout called. Yes, we have had a timeout called by Texas because of just that. So, uh, and with the timeout, he can enter back into yes, the play. Absolutely. And I, I think to keep him on the field, that's an excellent timeout. Do you think? <laughs> <laughs> just you know, in case, all... Nordgren, he's out of Dallas, Texas. He's thrown just a few passes. He's also the holder for the kicker. Uh, out of the helmet with Carpenter. What's tough Part for the... Of the trio of fabulous Ohio State linebackers. What's going to make it tough for Ohio State is it's really four down territory right now. Unless it's third and or fourth and very long and they take a field goal, if it's fourth and possible, they're going to go for it. Only one timeout remaining for Young and the Horns. They trail it by six. Second down and nine. Three down linemen, they rush five out of it. He's got it. Can he get the first down? Let's see where they spotted. He was stepping out of bounds. He was close to it. Charles again. Lacy from the backfield. Really surprised Ohio State is having trouble with this play. It's the same play they completed last time. They're, oh, Texas is keeping their tight end and fullback in. They're only sending three people out, and Ohio State has failed to cover the running back on both plays. Third down and one. Charles stays in as the running back. Young always dangerous in third and one. Young driving forward. He might not have gotten it. There is a penalty flag. The line judge threw a flag. And the way Texas is applauding, that's going to go against the Buckeyes, and that'll give them a first down. A.J. Hawk on the tackle for Ohio State. You could see by Kula, number 57 is lined up off sides at the snap, and that was a pretty easy one. 344 and one timeout remaining. The Horns need a touchdown on an extra point. 316 of Texas, 340 yards. for the rush the freshman is thrown back Carpenter was in on top of it and David Patterson Schlegel was in there diving in on that play taking on a blocker all three of the linebackers Patterson was in on it also this Ohio State front four and the substitutes they've been bringing in have been playing some great football late defensive substitution Buckeyes send an extra defensive back, the nickel man, Mitchell, number 32, who has been playing nickel all night. They'll rush three. Carpenter moves up into a gap. Now you back back out. Second down and nine. Got a lot of time. Throws in zone. Cut! Touchdown, Texas! What a great play for the Horns! Vince Young comes up with a 24-yard scoring pass to Lima Swede, the X-Man. Nate Sally could not quite get there. It was right on the end line. The ball was perfectly thrown to the tallest receiver Texas has. Now an extra point that it doesn't get much bigger than this one. Pino right here. And I think we're going to get a replay on this one. We watched replay several times in the Michigan Notre Dame game. You all know uh, that they use it in the Big Ten. It's not a coach's challenge. Gary, let's let's Nate take a Sally look. Nate Sally is the guy who doesn't quite get there. 
Watch this perfect throw. He just flicks it. Swede catches it. One foot down. Take another view. He was definitely in. Did he bobble the ball? That's what they'll look for next. No question he was in the end zone. Yes. Catches it, bobbles it, comes down, and he's got it. At least in a, a my opinion. Nice play by Swede. One, two, catches it, elbow comes down. I think it's pretty clear, but I think it's good that they checked it. No question they should check yes. this. This is such a huge play. It was exactly what they should do. And they don't have a referee with a hood on over the sideline. The decision will be made upstairs. The official right there. Look at that official. Of Look at that ball thing right there. Kept his eyes completely on the football and made the call. And they will tell him on the field here as to uh, what the decision. And again, it is the observer upstairs. We have Big Ten replay officials, even though we have Big 12 officials on the field. And uh, for a few moments here tonight, and uh, Trussell was told, uh, along with Mac Brown, they couldn't find the pagers for the officials. The play is confirmed as called. Touchdown. Texas now an extra point away from the lead. The only interesting thing is because of the review, in essence, it iced the kicker just a little bit. You're going to use a timeout. It's just an extra point. If it was a 50 yard field goal I might buy into that. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I, maybe I'm flashing back to last week again. <laughs> That's true. Well McGee <laughs> missed the first three. They had the three count. misses. So here comes Pino. He took over the kicking here tonight. Two. Matt Nordgren the quarterback will put it down. Two blocks last week. Schrader is the center. Got it. Texas leads it. 45 points scored here tonight. And Vince Young comes up with another big play. Swede makes a great catch, and Sally can't jar it loose. What a football game this has turned out to be. 2.37 to go, and I suppose if there's anything you might want to second guess, it's the fact that Jim Trussell went for a 50-yard field goal instead of perhaps a pooch punt to make it a little bit tougher for the Texas offense. Nevertheless, Jim Trussell now has a tougher choice to make. You fans out there, which quarterback would you put in right now to run the two-minute drill here? Who would go out for the Ohio State Buckeyes? Gary, you get the first You vote know here. I like Justin Zwick, but I would go with Troy Smith in this instance, so I have one more weapon to scramble. They'll kick it low on the ground. Santonio on a big hop. To the 30, ball's loose. Ross has it. Ross has it. Unless it was whistled down. No signal. This one was not whistled down. Texas football. Now the replay official again will look at this upstairs. It, it is knee hit the ground before the ball came free. I thought his back hit the ground, but I don't know if the ball came free. See, I thought his back hit the ground and then the ball came free. He gets hit, turns, gets hits again, has the football, goes down, and the ball pops out. If he was down, do you think he was down, Gary? Yes, I do. So I think do he I. was down. Let's see how good we are. So again, the observer upstairs will run those replays back and forth, take another look at it. This is the first year that the Big 12 will also employ instant replay in their games. Troy I think he might have asked for the spot right now. Yeah, Troy Smith and Justin Zwick have their helmets on on the sideline. After review, the player was down. It will be Ohio State's ball. First and 10 from the 
And I think that in both instances, correct decisions were made. And that's what you ask of instant replay. Zwick. So it will be junior Justin Zwick from Massillon with 2.30 up on the scoreboard. Trestle figures that the bowl game, the first game, going through all those practices, that he might be able to handle the two-minute drill here a little bit better. However, on third and one or in the right. red zone, right. they might switch quickly back to Troy Smith, who's a little bit better runner. Now the Horns, they've identified who the quarterback is, Zwick and the shotgun. Takes off. Fumble. No question. Ball loose. Texas. Robson's got it to the 20-yard line. Kelson knocked the ball free. There is a penalty flag. There probably is a celebration on that far side. That would be my guess. Brian Robinson did, uh, now wait a minute, Mac is livid about something. Justin Zwick, no one open on this play, starts to scramble. That's their first sideline warning of the game. First and 10, but Texas. Much ado about line. nothing. Yeah, yeah exactly. much ado about nothing. It was a sideline, they came out on the field. Right. And, uh, you right. know, and why not? This is just a huge, huge, development of this football game. Zwick is it now watch him knock the ball out. Look at that. Kelson, who's been playing the linebacker on the strong side, is a natural safety. He's one of those lighter linebackers that Mack wanted to employ. That is the Buckeyes' first turnover this game. Gary, it came at a horrendous time. I, I know that I'm in the minority, but I like quarterbacks to hold the ball in their passing hand because they never have it. They're not used to holding it in their left hand. I know a lot of people think they should switch. I don't. Now Young and Charles go to work on the clock. The freshman picks up almost a dozen yards on that run. And the horns are banging in again. Up by one with 2.11 to go. Brent, a touchdown by Texas would not, would still give Ohio State a chance to tie the football game. If they do it, they have to have time on the clock to do it. We've had great aerial shots tonight, courtesy of our friends at Outback Steakhouse. Proud sponsor of the Outback Bowl, the Outback Steakhouse airship, the Bloomin' Onion. Provides aerial coverage for sporting events across the country. Trussell checking that clock. They, they can't let Texas just take a knee and win the game. Charles. Carpenter up on the stop. The Bucks will use a timeout here. Big smiles over there on the uh, Texas sideline. The yeah. coaches relax. They think they've got this one well under control right you know, now. I, I got the feeling, though, that the coaches' smiles were forced, and Vince Young is a lot cooler than they are right now. He seems as relaxed as you can be. Great play by, Ro by Robinson in this game, and Drew Kelson coming across and ripping that ball. What a play. So we're Gary Danielson and Jack Arute. I'm Brett Musburger. As good, if not better than advertised. Number two, Texas, and number four, Ohio State. All night long, Texas once went out by 10 points. The Buckeyes battled back, took the lead, went out by six. Horns hung in, hung in, kept digging in, and finally Vince Young fired a touchdown pass and they're up by one 23 22 now after Ohio State's first turnover of the game young and the horns are trying to close the deal in the first ever meeting between Ohio State and Texas the rematch next year in Austin I can hear folks scrambling for tickets already if that one's nearly as good as this one you're in for a great great football game both of these teams deserve a lot of credit no matter who wins this game here tonight.
Ben Shiano crashes across the five yard line. A.J. Hawk in on top of him. Ohio State takes their last time out. Trestles on the field. Let's update the game plan, Gary. Sure, Texas in this game wanted to stay balanced. I think Ohio State did a great job of that. They forced them into a passing game. Young answered, yards after catch. Did Treddy Ginn or Santonio Holmes catch a short pass and do anything? No. Texas did a great job of that. Three sacks on the Buckeye quarterbacks. The story of the game, though, Ohio State couldn't get it in the end zone when they were down there three times. If I didn't know better, I would say that Ginn was another victim of that old cover jinx. What's that magazine SSI I like to read every jinx? week? Yeah, but right. I won't say it because I like those fellas. <laughs> Here's that touchdown strike moments ago. And then Zwick taking off as the ball knocked free. Robinson recovers it. And it is now inside the five-yard line. A third down coming up for Vince Young. These folks who traveled up Texas way, they've been treated to a great evening of football, and so too have the, uh, the Ohio State fans. And that party's about to begin, isn't it? the quarterback draw on this one. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't going to leave his hands. He's going to take it around the left side, short of the end zone. Nice job. Early in their game, he might have dove out and tried to stretch that ball across, but in that instance, Is he, he get covered up, up got Fumble hit, down. got nailed, but he did not fumble the football. They can't stop it. No matter what happens here in the next minute, Vince Young leaves a Heisman Trophy candidate. Yeah, you bet he does. There is no doubt about that, folks. You would expect Vince to take one of those dives, but ball possession right now, when he looked up and saw Bobby Carpenter sitting right there, he said, uh-uh, I better make sure I don't fumble this one. Hawk and Carpenter made a little sandwich. Of course, Carpenter is the one who uh, who uttered that quote. Our goal is when Vince Young leaves here, he won't be a candidate for the Heisman. Scratch that one goal. Game still on the line here with 29 seconds to go you know, and everybody out of timeouts. I agree with you 100%, though. That is not trash talking. No, That's football. Absolutely. That's, That's what everybody's goal yeah, should I, be when they play against a Heisman Trophy. I kind of chuckled at that and yeah. said, what the heck? That's exactly what Carpenter should think. And for the most part, they've done their job. And you know, Carpenter will congratulate Young after Absolutely. the game. Absolutely. He will, you know. And how close was that? Fellow. How close was that field goal from 50 yards? What was it? A foot Just wide? Just a foot wide. A foot wide, and they you don't know, remember, have to gamble. Remember, they lost about four yards exactly. in that series. That was a. When you go back and look at the yardage lost. Just before the Buckeyes missed that field goal, it has come down to a couple of feet here tonight. That's all that separated these two Absolutely. fine, fine football teams. And as a fan, these are the kind of games we want. We don't give a gush dang about January right now. And, uh, we want some action. Interesting strategy here. Will they go for it? I think they may just go for the touchdown. Because you don't want to give the ball back to Ohio State. There's the kick. That's how close this thing was for Ohio State icing it. What was that, a foot? No more. They're going to go for it. Good call by Matt Brown. They got the big guy in, too. That's Henry Melton. Here comes Max Truck. Option to him. He'll walk it in. signal down there. Melton wants it. They're con conferring. Did he get the ball across the plane of the end zone? I'll tell you, Melton slowed down there trying to kind of hot no, dog the dive. They say he didn't. This will be reviewed, but I watch him slow down when he gets this ball. I'm surprised. They pitch it to a freshman. He comes up. Now watch him kind of ease into it. Gets ready to dive. 
Oh, he get that ball across. That ball is across that line. Is he outside the pylon? That's the that's the question. I I don't know that it's conclusive here. Lower your head. You're 275 pounds. Your body hits him. He didn't even stretch the ball. That could be I'm short. Not, I think he was outside that, the that pylon. That could be short. Holy cow! That's I think he's outside the pylon. And uh, Troy Smith, it looks like, is going to trot out here for that the last is, 25 seconds. If that 276-pound guy now, can't run over Yabodi on that play. If he can find his high school teammate from Cleveland's Glenville High School, can they get Teddy Ginn loose? Smith. There's the safety. There's the safety with 19 seconds to go. Aaron Harris takes Troy Smith down in the end zone. Now we'll see an onside kick from Ohio State. You can see it right in the middle right there. Comes in, he's spying on Troy Smith. Good job. He sees it, he sees Troy Smith's not gonna scramble, so he accelerates as the spy guy and gets the safety. You're in the end zone, nobody really to throw to. You gotta let it go then. You just gotta throw it up and hope for something. Troy tries to go up and too quick. Aaron Harris just too quick for him, number two. 25-22, three-point Texas lead. The one thing Mack and the Horns don't want to do, of course, is put it in the hands of the, a dangerous return man, but 19, 19 seconds remaining. Well, they'll receive. They'll try to kick it down to, on, low on the ground. They've nope. used that. They'll receive the ball here off the no, that's safety. What am I thinking of? Safety, of course. Ohio State will try the onside kick and get the try to get the ball back. Got to first get the ball, then we find get. <laughs> A lot of stuff has happened in this football game. He's got it set on that tee to do just that. High hop, down goes the horns at the 32-yard line there. So now without any timeouts, Vince Young and just simply run out the clock and Texas will go back home with a hard fought, well-deserved victory against a very game Ohio State team that now will regroup. Now let me take you through the, uh, we've had seven years of BCS Bowls, I believe. That means we've had 14 teams play for the championship, five of them have reached the title game with one loss. Ohio State's not completely out of it, but their chances are less than 50%. Meanwhile, the horns are soaring. And the big question now remains, can they get past Oklahoma and run the table this year and go back to the Rose Bowl? What a great football game. Mac Brown is telling Jim Trestle just that. Gave Vince Young one too many chances. Yes, they did. I really wonder if Jim would. Uh, oh, he would not throw the ball down there when he was in field goal range. I'm telling you, I, I thought they were going to just going to kick the field goal. Let's check in with uh, Jack with a very happy Mac Brown. We're going to bring Mac over to his superstar and get both of them. Mac, Mac, come on over here. All right, tell me about this guy. I think he's the best player in the country at his position or maybe any position because he competes. He doesn't get down when something bad happens and he just continues to play till we win. Vince, can you categorize this win? Can you tell me where it fits in all of your accomplishments? Man, this is the place that we want to be as a team overall, man. We went out here and fought. The fans stayed with us and coach did, the coaches did a great job getting us prepared this week. Now, you went down and it looked like it was maybe an injury. What happened to you? A little head injury. I got a little dizzy a little bit. Coach, at least we had some good time off to take one and got myself back and uh, back in the game and make some plays. Mackey got dizzy. Maybe you need to get him dizzy more often. He stays dizzy, but I like it that way. And thank goodness the coaches save the timeout so we could let him have a breather and what a competitor. Congratulations to both of you. Sorry, Thank Barry. you very much. Vince Young and the Texas Longhorns 
win a historic showdown with the Ohio State Buckeyes. And uh, A.J. Hawk and Vince Young, two of our brilliant stars here tonight. They'll be the Chevrolet players of the game. And in recognition of their effort, Chevrolet makes a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. So many people to thank for this great broadcast. The executive producer, Mike Pearl. The senior producer at ABC, Bob Toms. The coordinating producer, Bob Goodrich, who produced tonight's game. Directed by Steve Bime. The TD was Randy Hargrove. The associate producer, Will O'Toole. Our associate director, Brian Fay. And the PAs, Dan Barr and Julie Norman. The production manager, Kevin Windling. And our technical manager, Mark Towie. On the computer stats, Craig Rothberg. Up here, George Hill, the spotter, Brian Mobelson, the score bug operator, Jason Polstein. And we'd like to also thank the uh, SIDs, John Bianco at the University of Texas and Steve Snap from Ohio State University. We want to thank you for everything. And especially, we want to thank these players from these two schools. What a night of college football they gave us. ABC Sports is online now at ESPN.com. Search ABC Sports. And a reminder, the NFL heats up. So Monday night, join Al and John when the Eagles take on the Falcons at 9 Eastern on ABC. Again, our final score on a classic, 25-22, Texas wins it. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports Championship Television. For Jack Aroot, Gary Danielson, and our entire ABC gang, I'm Brett Musburger. So long, everybody.